some of the mice run around. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, good morning, council. Good morning, uh, staff. Good morning, our guests in the gallery. Good morning, Chris. Good morning from the viewing public. Welcome to our council meeting of Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. I hope everybody survived April Fool's Day. Uh, we have a pu we have published agenda on our website, which is what's in front of us today. At this time, we will stand and sing our national anthem. And paste the uh, flag here. That's right. All right. So, uh, like I said earlier on, we have a, a published agenda that was on our website. And uh, are there any additions or deletions to the, today's agenda from uh, council or staff? Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. Um, I have an addition I'd like to add to the agenda. Um, we had a brief discussion of this during the last budget meeting. Uh, so I'd like to add that council refer the Financial Assistance Program Committee Round 1 recommendations back to the committee uh, for reconsideration now that the 2024 budget has passed. The budget did have a decrease in the amount of money into the community grant program. We have already received uh, intakes two and three, but still haven't finished approving intake one. So um, I think it's appropriate for the committee to be able to review all three of those intakes uh, now. So I'm hoping to add that as a discussion. Okay, are you moving that, Deputy Mayor? Yes, please. Do I have a seconder for that addition? Councillor Dubik, any discussion on that addition? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. One right. other thing just for- Go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Um, just if I can ask the uh, clerk a point for clarity. On today's agenda, we have the um, fees and charges bylaw. Um, just a question of process. At the last council meeting, we had a discussion around the report from staff that led into the fees and charges bylaw being on our agenda today. During today's discussion, is it appropriate to have um, discussions or changes to that bylaw, or would we need to add an item to the agenda in order to have a discussion about the fees in the bylaw before discussing the bylaw? Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor McQueen, um, to Councilor, or just Councilor, so Deputy Mayor Nielsen. <laughs> Um, absolutely, you can have that discussion today. That bylaw is on, and um, any discussions related to the fees specifically on Schedule F can be okay. discussed. Fees okay. outside of that cannot be. Thank so, you very much. So just for clarity, it can be discussed or changed. Okay, thank you for that. Anything else, Stephanie Mayor? Not for me. <laughs> okay, are there any other additions, changes to the agenda? Seeing none, then can I have a uh, move on the seconder for the uh, uh, amended agenda? Deputy Mayor, Councillor Wickens, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried. All right, so uh, to our procedure bylaw, now we have a approved amended agenda. We have section uh, item three in our agenda with regards to open form. Those that wish to speak to any item that's on our approved agenda, they have uh, up to three minutes to uh, add your comments. Uh, there's no dialogue. There's no 
a question period just to bring information to council. So Madam Clerk, do we have anybody wishing to speak? Uh, thank you, Mayor McQueen. Yes, uh, the first up is Leslie Priddle uh, speaking about the uh, fees and charges bylaw. Okay, thank you. Come on up uh, to the podium there, Leslie. And you have three minutes. Just whenever you're ready. Before you start the time, I would respectfully ask that I be allowed the time to completely finish this. You publish your agenda two days prior to your meeting, but our presentations are needed to be in seven days. Um, I was unable to get on this meeting as on the agenda for this meeting. So I would like to be given some extra time, if not possible. Um, I think it's important you hear it vocally instead of by email. I have brought copies with me, but I can also email you if that's not possible. So before you get started, how much time do you think you're gonna uh, need? Probably two to three minutes more. I, I tried to time it last night, tried to cut it down. Okay. It was difficult because I'm extremely passionate about the issue. So let me, so, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go to the council to see if they'll permit, because we, we have to change or our, our bring a motion from our procedure bylaw that goes outside the three minutes. Councillor Allen. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. To our clerk, how many people do we have registered for open forum, please? Through, through the mayor. Uh, through Mayor McQueen to Councillor Allen, we have three registered. So I would move that we allow all three within reason to finish their <laughs> presentations. Hey, do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Allwood, any discussion on that change to our procedure bylaw? Seeing none, all in favor? Oh, they, that's carried. So yeah. you have, and within reason, Thank you. <laughs> you no, know, I appreciate that. Plus, I have voice and breathing problems. So, yeah. yeah. Good morning. I'm here today to voice our community's concerns and disappointment with this council's decision to raise ice time costs, or in particular, our Osprey Minor Hockey Organization and others using our facility. While we do understand that costs go up and there is a need for a slight increase, this decision is showing a complete lack of interest in caring about anything but the bottom line. There has been no consultation or discussion with this primary user group or any of our community groups that use our center on what we can do or recommend as a community to cut down on costs, increase use, and therefore revenue to help, off, help offset any financial deficit. This affects everyone in our community, not to mention deterring groups from outside the area to rent it. Your decision to increase our cost by what amounts to $44 per hour is quite simply outrageous. Yes, these figures are accurate. This year, our cost was $105 per hour, including HST. Next year, what you're proposing is $149.16 per hour, including HST, a 42% increase in our cost. Your staff recommended a 20% discount on groups that book 50 plus hours of ice time. I would like to know what this council considers the definition of the word group. I would also like to know how many members of this council asked what the current rate was for groups using our facility. Were you aware of the consequences and did you even consider the effect this would have on our community? Osprey Minor Hockey is a young volunteer nonprofit organization providing a vital service to our Osprey community and especially our young people. They booked between 530 and 550 hours of ice time. They had 10 teams this year with a total registration of 116 kids from ages, ages three to 18, all learning and playing hockey. They are fully expecting to have a U21 team next year with 130 kids registering. This year we had kids from age two to 18, which I already mentioned, playing. Dads volunteer as coaches and parents and grandparents have filled our center every night that hockey was booked. Did any of you come to our facility when the stands were full? The only other center with a slightly larger registration is Flesherton. However, Flesherton is the amalgamation of two hockey centers, Dundalk and Flesherton. Osprey is strictly Osprey. Your decision has a direct effect on all our families involved. It could amount to an extra $200 per child for registration. This is a hardship for many families who are already dealing with rising costs in every aspect of life, including their mortgage, their taxes, food, fuel, you name it. Osprey Minor Hockey has prided themselves in keeping registration at a reasonable cost. There have been families on low income that approached the organization and asked for extra time to come up with money to pay for their kids, and Osprey has been there for them. I shouldn't have to speak about the benefits of our youth being involved in sports, 
but I think it's important for you to understand how vital this program is. During these times, the mental and physical health of our youth should be a priority. Sports teaches them life skills that they will carry through to adulthood. Teamwork, dedication, perseverance, responsibility, and discipline are all vital to being su successful in their future endeavors. By your decision, you are directly affecting the health and welfare of our community. You are responsible for putting the future of Osprey minor hockey in jeopardy. It is important to note that our own investigation seems to show that many municipalities are cutting ice time costs for organized sports in order to support these young organizations and contribute to the well-being of our youth. They seem to realize the hardship families face right now. If this goes through, our cost will be higher than Collingwood's. We are also very upset with comments that speak to the fact that this council does not seem to understand what the word community means. We built our arena, we built our community center. We do not want to go anywhere else and to, to suggest this shows no concern or care for the uniqueness of our community and a total lack of interest in working with our community to resolve issues. There has been a lot of discussion regarding the cost and use of arenas within this municipality. Generating revenue seems to be the focal point. This municipality has a part in the underutilization and thus lack of revenue generated from our facility. This past year on several occasions, ice time was requested and told it was not available due to staffing issues. One case in particular stands out and that is a request by, 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 made by our local Osprey school four months in advance for ice time during the day for electives. This was originally turned down due to lack of staff, but eventually was made available, but not without pursuing through our board and council. We should not have to go to such lengths to book and use our facility. Yes, additional staff was added later in the season. However, requests were still denied. This municipality does not provide any program for communities which would utilize these centers year round. There are municipalities that hire program coordinators as Southgate does. This not only brings in revenue, but is a much needed service and would utilize these facilities during the summer months with ball hockey, indoor soccer, lacrosse, and numerous other sports. It would also provide more avenues for our youth who these days desperately need programming. This municipality also does not promote its facilities. SEGHC provides programs, but most of these are for seniors or retirees and are available largely through the day when our young families' parents are working. And these centers are provided free of charge. They're free for the health and welfare of this age group, and we are supportive of this. But what about the health and welfare of our youth? The word used was staggering when council was provided with a hall usage report and Osprey showed the most in-kind or unpaid use totaling 2,038 and three quarter hours or 87.9%. It must be noted that of this 966 was for pickleball and 127 was coded as Gray Highland staff hours, which I am told is the Ram Rodeo. This takes place on the grounds of our specifically on our facility specifically on land purchased by our Feversham Agricultural Society. This means that 1,093 hours of those 2,038 were attributed to groups that do not pay or contribute to our facility. Of the balance, only 533 hours can be contributed to community groups that donate countless hours to our community and our facility. The balance is attributed to groups which fall under the privacy issue. This kind of reporting, unless viewed fully, is very misleading. How about generating revenue by cutting costs and by looking at specifics on choices and decisions made? For instance, why were four staff members present at times during our recent curling bond spiel? This is after the ice was in. I see arena staff driving municipal vehicles. I would have loved having a company vehicle full of gas to drive, drive back and forth when I was employed. Why were the advertising, scenes in the advertising signs in the arena not billed for a period of at least four years, not including COVID, resulting in lost revenue of approximately $13,000? Why were those, sponsored public skate, those who sponsored public skating in previous years not contacted? I heard the comment, we don't have staff. It wasn't an efficient way to contact people. It is very inefficient when you lose possible revenue. In this particular case, I asked why we as a board weren't contacted. I would have personally phoned 
each community member. New boards for advertising sponsors were paid for when there was nothing wrong with the old ones and now sit there empty and look absolutely ridiculous in our arena. I have spoken to your staff on these issues and they, they say there will be changes next year. That does not negate the fact that lost revenue could be as much as an additional $3,000. The amount of staff time it takes to make curling ice has often been mentioned. How about sending an employee for the specific training involved in this procedure so it can be done in less time and more efficiently, resulting in better conditions for our curling club, which has been in existence since 1983, thus cutting down on wages. How much more time I am sure one of our community groups <laughs> would contribute to the cost involved. Least of all, there are eight employees with this municipality on the Sunshine List, as reported by Collingwood today. How do you expect our communities to react to this decision when they render information such as this? We also have many questions on the financials of our center and more comments on usage reports. I question whether you as councillors really look into the supporting documents on the reports. I have been in touch constantly with your staff regarding issues with our facility. Can you, can you sort of wrap it up, Leslie? Because, okay. I've got one last paragraph. Okay. Um, working with our community to resolve issues, and I've been pleased to develop a good working relationship with them. Why did you not take the recommendation on this issue? Our facility needs to be accessible and affordable for all user groups. Bottom line, you have chosen to put a vital community service at risk by your decision to increase cost to this extent while not exploring all other options. It makes all of our communities, not just ours, question whether this is the way that you're proceeding in order to eventually close an ice surface. As taxpayers, we deserve better. We can't work with you unless you work with us. We are asking that you defer this decision and that all councillors meet with our minor hockey executive and our Osprey Recreation Board to discuss this issue, issue and come to a decision that reflects the needs of all parties involved. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk, do we, you say you have two more wish to speak? Yes, uh, next up is Angela Teeter, also on the same item, 10.2. Okay. Angela, how much time do you think you need? <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was well written. I think yeah. these words need to be heard. Good morning, council, staff, community members. I would like to discuss the new proposed bylaw for parks and recreation fees and charges. While I completely understand the need to cover our costs for arenas and our facilities, the proposed increase for ice rentals concerns me. Specifically, the removal of a minor sports rate or the discounts for bookings over 50 hours in the for a season. While the local resident rate has not increased in a number of years, I've been involved for many. Sorry. Um, I feel the amount of the proposed rate uh, increase will change and impact our family's ability to afford the registration rates that will now need to be charged to cover the cost of this increase. For our Shooting Stars Girls Hockey Organization, an organization that doesn't scout, recruit, or select players, three teams this year, I might add, that are qualifying for provincials, small and mighty. These families will find an extra 200 to 250 registration fee to a total of $1,000 per player, a 40% increase too much and may not sign up their child due to financial commitments. This will likely result in a decrease of registration Therefore, a decline in the amount of ice our organization may need to move forward. If nothing else, this increase has the potential to achieve a way to backdoor close our arenas. We have fought extremely hard to prove that we want our arenas. I feel that we are gaining strength in our arena bookings. The weekly notices of available ice is helping. Don't make this increase so substantial that families have a very difficult choice to make. As a question, why was a 20% discount for hall rentals, I believe for a mere seven hours approved? but yet a multiple booking of ice over 50 was declined. This is inconsistent and inequitable. Our youth need to be engaged in extracurricular, extracurricular activities. They need to be friends with their peers. They wanna reach a common goal. Our youth sitting idle at home ultimately can create a boredom that creates an atmosphere for mischief, vandalism, and violence. Our town was recently a target of this. We need to keep the rental rates reasonable for an increase that is able to be affordable to all and inclusive to all. I'm asking that you do not vote in favor to approve this new bite, 
this new rate bylaw, yet you work with our minor sports groups to come up with a rate plan that will work for all parties and their paying families. We want our facilities to be busy. We want to stay local. We want to put dollars back into our own municipality. Please let us work with you to achieve this. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for that. Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you, Mayor McQueen. Uh, next up is Caroline DeAndre. I don't know if I said that right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking on item 10.2. Right. Is that the correct way to spell it? Soon? Good morning, uh, Councillors and Mayor. I will be brief. Uh, I was not planning to speak today, but I'm happy to. On behalf of all the parents that are involved in Osprey Minor Hockey, um, I will say that I have had the extreme pleasure of being new to this community. I moved here from Collingwood after being in that region for over 11 years and uh, have been I'm now in my third year in Grey Highlands. And um, I can say as, as a mother and as a community member, I'm always quite taken aback at the strength of this community and my experience in both Osprey School and the um, Osprey Minor Hockey has been nothing short of incredible. I do believe that we have something very special here. I don't see this level of community spirit and kindness in other regions to the extent that it is here. And I believe that an increase to the cost of hockey would put that tremendously at risk. Um, I, I voted in the last election and put my trust in all of you to be guardians and stewards of what I see as a beautiful region and also the future of my children and the children in my community. The word disappointing definitely comes to mind, especially having heard the deputations of the last two ladies, understanding that discounts have been cut, understanding that the cost of um, ice time will be increased without other due process in terms of generating revenue for the arena. I am aware that there has been proposals to close the arena and it has been met with a huge amount of horror really by everybody in the community to think that that would even be possible. Um, if we're all supposedly on board with uh, green initiatives and building sustainable communities, having a local community event space that does not require 30 to 40 minutes of driving is a very important part of that. I believe that there's a huge lack of programming and resources that could be there for children in the region and that they would be very much supported by all the families in Feversham and the surrounding area. Uh, without having to drive to, say, Dundalk or Markdale or other places. Um, I also just like to speak as a as a mother. Um, I, I can guess that many of you do not have children of school age, but men, some of you might, and also have uh, possibly grandchildren. And I think we're all quite aware that children are not really okay at the moment, um, from COVID to the impact of screens and technology. We have a huge, huge issue of mental health, of um, lack of connection amongst children, of lack of friendships amongst peers, social isolation, and just general physical health. So if we are on board with the kind of consensus priorities that our society is supposed to be in support of, then doing something like increasing the rates of hockey is very much in contrary to what those priorities are supposed to be speaking to. And I think you will inadvertently put a lot of children at risk by making a decision in this nature. I know personally, as speaking from my household, I have two boys that are doing very well in hockey. Um, they've just started, this was their first year. I would like more than nothing else to be able to support them in that journey. But I can say that a $400 increase to the cost of hockey for two kids in my family will likely result in them not being able to do that. And I know I'm not alone in that. So I do hope that you find a way to consult with the community members, with passionate women such as these who know a lot more about the costs and the backroom aspects than I do, and um, find another way to work with Osprey Minor Hockey to keep it alive and well in the community. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Carolyn. Just double checking, Madam Clerk, do we have anybody else for us to speak? That's everybody who registered. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Thanks for those speakers. And uh, yeah, my youngest is 19, so he's done now school. So. <laughs> well. You know, Councillor Wickens and I attended a, a arena board meeting out there a few months back, and the parking lot was full, I must say. 
Okay, so we uh, thank you very much again for, for speaking. So then moving on to item four in our agenda, then we have, uh, uh, is there any declaration of pecuniary interest with regards to council members? Okay, if one does arise, we can you can declare it at the time. Uh, then we have the minutes of uh, March 20th, uh, 2024. Would somebody care to move and second those minutes, please? Councilor Allen, Deputy Mayor, any discussion in those minutes? I mean, I think we're gonna have discussion maybe later on, so. If there are no other comments, uh, errors, or omissions, all in favor? That is carried. We have the, uh, the minutes of the Committee of the Whole of uh, March 27th. Uh, would somebody care to move those minutes to start with? We have a recommendation coming out of that, but uh, Councillor Allwood, Deputy Mayor, any discussion on the minutes themselves? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? That is carried. We do have a re one recommendation coming out of those uh, sets of minutes. That was brought up at that meeting, and uh, would somebody uh, care to put that motion on the floor? Councillor Lohead, second by Councillor Dubik. Discussion on that uh, motion, and I'll read it out then. That uh, recommendation from the committee to hold that council direct staff to begin the process of amending the zoning bylaw and official plan to remove in, to remove any pro, uh, prohib, prohibit. I can't even say the word now. Prohibit. I can't even say it. Uh, to the mobile and modular homes. Prohibitions. There we go. I had to, I had to slow down. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. I said these comments during the, the community of the whole itself. I'm not against the, the concept of what we're trying to do here. I just think that um, we are, you know, a good portion through the way of trying to amend the zoning bylaw fully, have discussions about the zoning bylaw fully. I don't think it's a good idea to, while in the middle of that process, pull out a specific item for change. I, I don't, I I support what we're trying to do. And I think that these recommendations are gonna be in the zoning bylaw anyway. So my comment is just um, not understanding the need to, to focus on this while we're trying to get the whole process done. It's just a comment, Mayor McQueen. Okay, thank you. Councilor Lohead. ahead. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. So I'll reiterate then what, what I said during the Committee of the Whole, which is that the, the thinking behind this process is to fast track um, this type of housing in our community, uh, which we know there's a need for. Um, we're hearing, um, you know, desperate pleas actually from some individuals um, to fast track this. And um, the word from our own planning department is that this could uh, allow this type of housing to be um, usable in our community months or perhaps more than a year ahead of the zoning bylaw review. So that. Okay. Councillor Dubik and then Councillor Allen. Councillor Dubik and then Councillor Allen. Okay. You, you were just here before <laughs> Councillor Allen. So okay, thank you so much. Um, so, I, so I'm just gonna actually speak to, to these both points <laughs> that have been brought up. Um, so as a, as a rule, uh, as a general rule, I would say, um, you know, I, I'm not a fan of taking, um, diverting or staff's attention off of a very important project here, uh, the zoning project that we, um, you know, update that we do need to complete. Um, however, I do see this as a bit of an exception. Um, and so, um, given the fact that, you know, making this change can open up the opportunity for um, the residents of our community to build affordable housing options that are currently not available. You know, given that we are in a housing crisis, um, I can support this. Um, and so, and so, so in terms of this recommendation here or so, I do feel I can support this just given sort of what it is. Um, you know, the impact that it will have, you know, if we even get one uptake, I think that's a win. You know, I would hope that we could possibly, you know, get more, um, you know, as, you know, as we do think about sort of what we're implementing here as well, this is a, a real change in mindset for society about what can be built on a residential lot. Um, and, and so, in terms of our process, in terms of our due process, um, you know, we did talk a little bit about that as well, the, uh, the Committee of the Whole. So, you know, so upholding 
the due process of having conversations and the input, um, you know, and following process um, so that we do get input from community is going to be important here because it is a real change, I would say, uh, I would say a societal change about how we think about what can be built on, on, a, on a residential lot. And I will leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that answer, Judy. And Sir Alan. Just seeing the wording, uh, sorry. Trying to do a couple of things at once here. Just seeing the wording, the process of amending the zoning and official plan to remove any prohibitions. Just wondering if that, and, and I was actually Googling the, the exact meaning of prohibition right now, I think we say we can't have them. So I guess if the intent of this is that we can have them in certain zones, then that's okay. But it's saying any, removing any prohibitions. I'm just wondering, I don't know who I should ask the question is, is are we... So, so is it the word itself? You're, you're... Yeah, remove any prohibition. Like there may be a prohibition, and again, that's why I was looking up the definition. But Certain there, times. there may be, like maybe out on inland lakes. Uh, I see our manager of planning. There may be. I think there will be some areas that we don't allow them. So just some clarification on that, please. Yeah, I got a comment to that, but I'll go to our manager of planning, uh, Manager Repke. You have some comments to that. Prohibition. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Chair. A lot of that could probably uh, get sussed out while you're going actually through the public meeting and the discussion once something's been drafted. So as a starting point, if council wants to restrict them in certain areas still, then I, I would suggest revising that direction because the direction that would have been taken with the current wording would to be to do what we discussed at the community of the whole meeting and just delete the definitions of mobile home, uh, modular home, the reference within the definition of single detached dwelling within the bylaw to exclude a mobile home that would get deleted. And then the line in the official plan prohibiting them would just be deleted and then they'd effectively be permitted everywhere that a single detached house is permitted. <clears throat> so if that's not what you have in mind, it makes for a different amendment. Um, Again, my, my suggestion was still to be to go that route. And then uh, if need be, you can you can backtrack from there. But again, I, I you know, we did talked about it. I, I think it's effectively an arbitrary definition of what a mobile home is anyway. So um, to draw lines on one zone or the other, you're you're still kind of making arbitrary decisions at that point. But if, if that's what you want to do, you, you should change uh, the direction and the motion. That's right. So, so just a comment to that Amendra Rupke. So your zoning bylaw is still in place for uh, current zoning bylaw is still in place for the footprint, setbacks, all that stuff is still. So if a if a a, a unit is if it was a mobile home or or a modular home, they would still have to fall into that category of setbacks, correct? If council gives a direction that was kind of drafted at committee of the whole, the only thing that changes is now someone can build a dwelling in comp compliance with all the provisions of whatever zone that is manufactured somewhere else and brought to the site in one piece and still meets building code and all of that stuff. That's the change that occurs. So yes, it still has to comply with all of the setbacks, the height, the law coverage and so on. And, and just follow up to that. Uh, you just mentioned that the building code still applies to it for windows and insulation and all it's it still applies to whatever it is as a building it absolutely needs it has to be four season dwelling it can't be like a three season cottage um it can't be jacked up on wheels still it'll have to be on a proper foundation and all that yep okay thank you i hope that adds a little bit of clarity okay other comments to the motion then madam seal do you have a comment you had your hand sort of up <laughs> <laughs> thank you mayor mcqueen um, I was just looking at the recommendation as well um, and, and thinking um, if the amendment says 
um, uh, the council directs staff to begin the process of amending the zoning bylaw and official plan to remove any prohibitions to allow mobile homes or modular homes on residential lots, or you could say, or where residential homes are currently permitted. But you wouldn't be able to apply it to anywhere that you couldn't apply it anyway, right? That's what I would think. Like, I, I think we're, we're, we're looking... Are we looking into this as too much detail in the sense where we're, I think as Manager Ropke was saying, and I'm just going back to what he said, he said just right now, you can't use those two items or those two. You can't use mobile homes or modular homes or secondary units. And we did have that presentation from Claire from Collingwood and they do allow it. So um, I think... I think, uh, you know, coming up the times, I think the discussion that we had, and I know Councillor Allwood, you wish to speak as well. So maybe I'll stop and go to you. Uh, thank you, Mayor McQueen, through you. I mean, we're we're mainly talking about uh, the delivery of these items, right? Because you can certainly build, um, put a quality homes or a royal home that's built off site, bring it in and put it on your foundation right now. Yeah. So there's there's no nothing that stops us in the existing bylaw. The existing bylaw talks about them being delivered on wheels, even if the wheels are removed, uh, that that's the uh, and the re revised draft of the uh, of the bylaw leaves that definition out by design, so that basically it doesn't care about that item anymore, um, as long as it meets the zoning and building code um, criteria for. Uh, uh, a residential unit, uh, it can go anywhere, uh, a single family home. So my concern was that we're circumventing the public process, but this will still have to go out for public input. So if, if that's the case, I do share some of uh, Councillor Allen's concerns about the uh, any prohibitions sort of, uh, but it's a big word. It is, <laughs> you know, I think we'll probably have time to uh, contemplate that after public meetings when we hear from our ratepayers. So just before I go to you, Deputy Mayor, and just from that, to Manager Rapke, if you're still there, these units are to be permanent units. If it was for a temporary purpose, then it'd have to go through a different pro pro uh, process, like maybe a granny suite, or if it was for temporary help, these are becoming permanent dwellings, which then have to fall into the code and septic and well and all that stuff in, in, in four C's, I think, as uh, Manager Rapke said. Does that have some bearing on that? These are are becoming permanent versus temporary. Uh, I think that may be something that you may want to have an issue with temporary, but that goes through a process as well, right? Manager Rapke? Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair. Kind of, sort of. So the, the temporary approach, the granny suite and permitting those through temporary use bylaw, kind of is the approach that predates the direction that you're going in now. So that'll kind of go away it's effectively gone away anyway with accessory dwelling units typically speaking people don't show up and say hey can i do a temporary use bylaw to permit the second unit because we already permit the permanent one so with a mobile home um again it's, it's built one piece you ship it to site still goes on a foundation all that stuff meets building code it's permanent it's permitted as a permanent building however uh theoretically you know, there's a scenario 25 years down the road, they don't need it anymore. They could sell it and it could still be picked up just because of the way it's physically constructed, right? So they'll be cited and permitted as a permanent building. However, there is the possibility that they could be there temporarily just because of the way they are. So just on that point, so they could be repurposed? They could be, yes. Mike, that's a key thing. Okay, Councillor Alwood, did you have any follow-up to that? Okay, then I have Deputy Mayor and then back to Councillor Allen. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. So just a comment given uh, Manager Rapke's um, response there. So you're saying that even with the changes here, we would still require the um, removal of any mobility to the building. So you're removing tires, axles, or you're putting it on some kind of a foundation. Many tiny homes are built off site on axle systems that are then designed their full season four season buildings they are meant to be put into place that can stay there for a permanent use but then have the ability to be moved off site so that uh, in instances where um, somebody builds a platform or pad that is appropriate for the weight and well and septic there's your 
additional additional unit, and then that person owns the additional unit, but then can take their additional unit somewhere else. So you're saying that even with the changes we're making here, that that kind of a system wouldn't be allowed. You're you're saying that the the mobility of the ability for the building to become mobile has to be removed as part of even this conversation. Manager Repke? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. No, that would still be possible, but it inherently, like the wheels come off when when they fix it to the foundation, right? You can just unfix it and put it back and, and then move it again. So it, it still has to be installed as if it's a permanent building, but that doesn't take away its ability to be repurposed again and moved elsewhere. But it can't just be kind of jacked up and not properly connected to the services, not in compliance with code. Because you'd have to winterize it because if it was just like a pipe going to the septic that was exposed, it would freeze, right? You'd have to have right, all that stuff. But I think following up on that, I think when we get into the discussion of our zoning bylaw, we need that further conversations around tiny homes and the mobility moving and all that kind of stuff, which I think we can still have that conversation, right? Absolutely. Because we saw like, like the, the home and garden show there two years ago. They had one outside on wheels. Right. You see them. They're all over the place. Right. And I think there's a whole different aspect to what they could be in the sense of a, a tradesman that moves around or whatever. But we have to talk about those items during that during that zoning bylaw for sure. Mr. Milan. Councillor Allen. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. I'd like to make an amendment. The council directs staff to begin the process of proposing to amend the zoning bylaw and the official plan to remove any prohibitions to mobile or modular homes. Okay. I just worrying about the wording that people are gonna read this and panic. So we're not necessarily going to remove everything, but we're I'm the proposing to do it. Okay. So after- I can say that word better anyway. <laughs> after the- Process of proposing to amend. Okay. Do you have a second? Councillor Allwood is seconding that amendment? I'll second that amendment, uh, okay. Your Worship. So, uh, Madam Clerk, you captured that. Discussion on the amendment. Councillor Riggins. So, what does proposing? I, I know what the word means, but how does that? Proposing to remove, maybe is that sure to hit? Does that move things along? Or are we just another chunk of red tape up? I so, Councillor Allen, I'll go back to the, the mover of the amendment. I don't think it adds any time or red tape or anything. It's just in the it's softer wording that we're not going to allow mobile homes and modular homes everywhere and that's the final say we're that's our proposal just like anybody puts forward a, an amendment to a bylaw to a zoning bylaw it's you know there's an idea we look at it we have a public meeting we get a planning report we make a decision that's my thinking all up councillor wickens Okay. Other discussion. So, just can you just reword that then, as as Councillor Wickens, you just reword re -word that or re, re uh, say that, Madam Clerk. The amendment through you, Mayor McQueen, that the main motion be amended to remove the words "amending" and add the word "proposing to amend." Okay. Councillor Dubé. Uh, thank you. So, this is a good conversation, and um, my thinking is evolving. Um, may I ask a question of either, uh, so staff, so either uh, Manager Rapke or um, or the CEO, how far are we into the the project? So like, we're, how close are we to completion? Um, if you can just comment on that. Thank you. Madam, Madam CEO. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor McQueen. It's a good question uh, uh, through you uh, to council. Um, there's estimated about 100, 120 hours left um, to complete the zoning bylaw, um, and and that's the, not including the public uh, public meetings. So depending on uh, how many public meetings we need to go forward, uh, that would be added to that. So um, as you know, you know there's there's a change in staffing too, which um, 
I would like to discuss uh, with council in closed session so I can give you more information at that point. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam CEO, uh, Councillor Duby. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so, so we are seeing the, I'll, I'll call it like the light at the end of the tunnel here, um, you know, as we're moving along in this project. You know, as we're talking about just the the removal of these two um, words or definitions, um, it's there are other tentacles to it. And I think there's some broader conversations here. Um, I, 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 I'm starting to worry more about slowing down the process of um, getting the zoning completed. I think this is going to um, maybe divert our attention unnecessarily. Um, I think it, I'm, I'm actually, my, my thinking here is, is evolving. I'm going to go, um, I, I, I won't, I won't be able to support this. I will, I, I do believe we should just um, fold this into our zoning conversations. Um, once we're done the zoning, you know, if we want to strike it, you know, and once we have those conversations with the public and we have a clear understanding of where we're going to land, then we can easily strike it out of the uh, official plan at that point. But I would like to um, fold this conversation because there are tentacles to it, you know, as, as we're just, you know, speaking here, um, don't want to just carve out this little piece. Um, I think it, it, it needs a broader conversation within the zoning. Let's get that done. And then we can address the OP very quickly at that point. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Madam CEO, I have a comment. Uh, thank you, Mayor McQueen, through you. Um, might I suggest that council uh, defer the decision on this until after the closed session? There is updated information I would like you to be aware of. Um, perhaps uh, it will aid in making this decision. Um, it's just unfortunate that it just came to light uh, yesterday. So I would like to have that conversation with council and, and then uh, perhaps you can make this decision after that. Okay, so let's just suggest that maybe this be re referred to later on in the day. Is it deferred? De de deferred or referred? Deferred. Okay, just I got council go ahead and then council around. I'll, I'll make that motion to defer until after the closed conversation. Okay, so a seconder for that uh, deferral, Councillor Wickens. I know Councillor Allen, you had wanted to make a comment. So the motion's on the floor. Can we still have debate on the deferral? No. Okay. So uh, all, all in favor of the deferral to work roughly just from a public perspective, they're watching what time uh, we're going to say like after three, three thirty, four. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, Mayor McQueen. I believe um, the first item in closed session is at three o'clock. Um, so I would suggest it would be after probably four o'clock. Just as the viewing public is watching, I just yep. think it's fair for to have a bit of a perspective on that. So the motion for deferral is on the floor. All in favor of the deferral to offer four. That is carried. Okay, that ends the debate or discussion on that part for now. Can I ask a question? Can the uh, clerk? Procedurally or? Yeah, when I had a motion on there is uh, an amendment to the motion that gets deferred also along with the main motion. Go ahead. Uh, through you, Mayor McQueen, yes, I, the motion that I actually crafted was that the main motion and amendment be deferred until after the closed session and discussions. I think, I think procedurally, if, it's, if there's deferral on the table, it takes precedence and it just sort of stops it and moves it to another time or place or whatever. Okay, so that is uh, to four o'clock, thereabouts. All right, uh, then moving on to, we have no delegations or presentations for today. And uh, then uh, we Excuse do have me, Mayor McQueen. Sorry. My apologies. There is actually a presentation. It's just not at this point in the agenda. It's at one o'clock. Well, I was going to say that we do. We Sorry. Do have that. Yep. No problem. You said there was none, so I just yeah. wanted to make sure we were on the same page. At this point, but yes, yeah, so there is a, an award presentation to occur at one p.m. according to our schedule. So thank you for that, uh, Madam Clerk. So uh, moving on then to the uh, section eight, which is uh, to be chaired by myself. So we have uh, two bylaws here. First bylaw 2024-030, repeal the bylaw 2023-134 Markdale Jubilee Task Force terms of reference and that council approved the bylaw 2024-030 being a bylaw to repeal bylaw 2023-134 Markdale Jubilee Task Force terms of reference. Um, do I have a mover and a seconder? Councillor Allen, Councillor Allwood. 
discussion on that. So basically this sort of takes it out of the process of having individuals named as part of that committee, but it's it's now putting council members on an external committee that they can talk and do their thing and come back with recommendations, I presume. Okay, since there's no other discussion there, all in favor? That is carried. All right, and then, uh, or maybe I jumped myself here. Um, and uh, bylaw 2024-031 being a bylaw to remove members appointed to various committees and bylaw 2022-103 and that council approved bylaw 2024-031 being a bylaw to remove members appointed to various committees and amend the bylaw 2022-103. So we care to move those. Uh, Deputy Mayor, Mr. Dubik, and that's sort of the other part of what I was saying. So any discussion on that? Seeing that, all in favor? That is carried. All right, what time have we got? Do you want to keep going? We're at 10, we'll keep going, we'll get through planning. So at this point then, uh, section nine of our agenda, uh, this is uh, moving over to uh, planning and I'll pass the chair over to Councillor Allen and I'm sort of questioning this item being planning, but I guess it's part of corporate services, so. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor McQueen. So 9.1 is the Gray Bruce Detachment Joint Board. And the motion is, Whereas the province of Ontario passed the Comprehensive Ontario Police Services Act 2019, which established the Community Safety, Safety and Policing Act 2019 on March 26, 2019. And whereas the Community Safety and Policing Act 2019 will be proclaimed on April 1, 2024. And whereas the Ministry of the Solicitor General has approved the creation of a joint Grey Bruce Police Services Detachment Board governing all municipalities and First Nations communities within the detachment area. And whereas the Grey Bruce Detachment Joint Board must be established and formalized prior to the date of proclamation. And whereas the Grey Bruce Detachment Joint Board will be composed of an elected official of all four, all participating municipalities and First Nation communities, four community appointees and three provincial appointees. And whereas the Grey Bruce Detachment Joint Board Community Appointee Selection Committee has recommended by resolution the appointment of four selected community appointees. Now, therefore, Council hereby supports appointment of the following members to the four community appointee positions on the Great Bruce Detachment Joint Board. Michelle Reynolds from the Township of Georgian Bluffs, Carl Ellis from the Township of Southgate, Jerry Solersh, Township of Northern Bruce Peninsula, Nicole Martin from the Municipality of Grey Highlands and that council directs staff to bring back a bylaw to appoint the above members, and that council hereby supports the Township of Georgian Bluffs providing administrative support to the board, and that council hereby supports the Township of Georgian Bluffs onboarding a part-time shared staff resource with costs to be shared evenly amongst the nine participating detachment parties, and that staff be directed to create and circulate the Joint Board's 2025 operating budget to all participating bodies prior to commencement of 2025 budget deliberations. Can I have a mover for that, please? Deputy Mayor Nielsen and seconded by Councillor Dubik. Any discussion? Mayor McQueen. So just a bit of an update as, uh, as the report is here. We've had our first meeting and these recommendations came out of that uh, info session and moving forward, they're talking about having a meeting like, sometime in May, but there's a, you'll see on the report, there's uh, two items on there and I'm looking at the clerk of discussion around the budget part. And also there is a requirement of, of uh, I think up to eight hours of training that uh, through different module, different processes will have to happen. But uh, Madam Clerk, is there any comments from you with regards to the, the proposed uh, budget contributions? I know it's sort of laid out there on, on uh, where page is it, on page 10 or 11 there. And uh, and I'm sure that discussion will happen more at the board level once that's in place as well. But um, it, looks, it looks like our 
portion is, is pretty much right on yeah. the actuals for 2023. Right. Now, the insurance isn't included in that, so I'm not sure how much that will add, but it's not going to be right. egregiously I guess, different, I wouldn't think. And Clerk uh, Van Alstein. Um, thank you, through you, Chair Allen. Um, in discussions with the other clerks involved in um, kind of from all the other participating municipalities, um, it was discussed that for this year they wanted to try and keep the budget fairly close to what most people already budget for their police services board. And that's why I think they're talking somewhere around the $5,000 mark for the remainder of 2024. Um, but there is talk that for 2025, it'll be close to double that. Um, and there's going to be an increase in the number of meetings. And there's also under the new CSPA, there's more requi requirements for the board. Um, so it's going to be more involved. And that's why they felt like a shared resource was the way to go. So Georgian Bluffs is looking at hiring somebody who would be part-time exclusively, um, like half their hours would be to put towards the joint board. And then the other half their hours would be, they would be working on Georgian Bluffs administration. Um, and so we would be paying as a board half of that resources salary. Great Highlands would be paying one ninth. Of yes, that. as the board, it would be half, and then you would pay your ninth of it. And when this all was coming about, it seemed like they were trying to save money, but I think maybe the only organization that's going to save money is the OPP, and that they only have to go to one meeting instead of a meeting in each area. For the municipalities, it looks like it's going to cost us more. Opin that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> In looking back at previous year's budgets, um, we have, as a board, spent more than the five thousand. Um, I think even in twenty twenty three, we were somewhere around sixty five hundred dollars. Um, so, I don't think what is being proposed is completely out of the realm of yeah. of where we're currently at. Thank you. Okay, uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Chair Allen. Uh, a question just regarding um, the provincial appointees. I know in the past there's been a delay in getting a provincial appointees appointed um, to Mayor, maybe Mayor, Mayor McQueen. Has there been an indication of the um, speed at which they'll be appointed? Have they already been appointed and chosen by the province? I know you have um, already recommended here the community appointees. I'm just wondering if there's been word on on that process because I know in the past for the police services board there's been some significant delays in trying to get the community the uh, community appointees or sorry the provincial appointees. Mayor McQueen, no idea. <laughs> Other than it, it's got to go through a process, and 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 that was our discussion at our first meeting we had was is what next, and and basically I guess it'll roll out from maybe Georgia Bluffs or where they get communication. You know, because that will be funneled up to the province and it will be the province that will make those appointments. Not this we'll just probably all of a sudden so and so and so and so and so and so is appointed from the province. And you know, Madam Clerk has any more to add to that? I don't know. Clerk Van Alstein. Um, thank you through you, Chair Allen. There's been a lot of discussion about that at the board level with, with the clerks and the province has not rolled out a date at this point. They're, they don't seem to be in a, a hurry to do it. They have told the boards to carry on without those appointments because you can still obtain quorum, although those are still considered members. We just don't have appointed members. So okay. Councillor Dubik. Uh, thank you. So just a quick comment. Um, so even if our financials at a municipality level is slightly increasing, uh, maybe versus, um, you know, previous years, the fact that we're um, freeing up OPP time from a lot of hours of meetings, I think is a win for our community. Um, so I so I think that's a fair trade off. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Mayor McQueen. So I think it does say in here that uh, the meetings will be a hybrid type meeting. So depending, you know, they talk about where that location should be that would, would house all, all those individuals, whether it's in person or uh, 
hybrid. I guess the point is, is long as it opens up. So if there is a concern from any of the communities, they can still have the access to that police services board, whether it's in Southgate or in North Bruce Peninsula, there's still an avenue to do that, uh, that um, venue through that. Because when you, sometimes you get bigger and it becomes, you know, like, for example, like the school board, you meet in Chesley, you know, like there's, it, it gets to the point where it's, it's restrictive to a lot of people who want to attend only because it's not as close to, to, to attending and not saying that it happens all the time, but through your police services boards, your committees that does allow that opportunity for public to be delegations if they have concerns or whatever. So you know, let's still be in place, whether it's if they drive or they do the hybrids. I'm not sure on delegations, how that's going to roll out in, in that process, but I would assume that it needs to be in place for that public public part of that. I don't know if the clerk has comments to that. Clerk Van Um Thank you through you, Chair Allen. Um, there has, one of the reasons that um, they the hosts decided to go with this is because they had the hybrid meeting capabilities and not all nine participating municipalities have that. Um, and additionally, once the board is in place, one of your first uh, Role. processes will be to establish the board's procedure bylaw, which will include how delegations are um, able to be heard by the police services board. So since you sit on that board, Mayor McQueen, <laughs> I suggest you you watch for that. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. And it, one other comment to you, Mr. Okay. Chair, was uh, you're not allowed to, uh, I was you probably wrote read it, until you complete the training, you're not allowed to vote. You can attend, but you can't vote. So yeah, that's I know that training has been a big part of over the years about the police services board and, and emphasizing the training and stuff and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, thank you. Okay. All those in favor. That's carried. 9.2 seniors advisory committee meeting minutes. The council received the unapproved minutes of the 2024-0311 Seniors Advisory Committee meeting for information. <laughs> Councillor Dubik, Deputy Mayor Nielsen, any discussion? All those in favor? Carried. Recommendation number two, that council approve that council approve a Gray Highlands age-friendly health fair to take place on June 11th or June 25th, 2025. Just trying to think, is that um, FCM? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the week before. Yeah. Okay. But this is for next year, isn't it? The 2025. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does somebody want to make that motion? Pre-COVID, we had permission to move forward with a seniors health fair. Actually, we're calling it an age-friendly health fair this time. It was then a seniors health fair. And then, to say, COVID hit and... and uh, obviously couldn't go ahead. So um, there is a fair in Collingwood and Southgate had one, I think last year, but there's question whether they move forward and have another one. Um, so this, uh, do we want a motion on the floor? You're going to make that motion? Okay. So I'm going to make the motion. I would just like more conversation about what it is. Mm -hmm. That's well, thank fine. You. Okay. Mayor is seconding it. Discussion. Councillor Dubik. Deputy Mayor. Um, through you, uh, sorry, to you, Chair Allen. So you are also the uh, chair of the Seniors Advisory Committee. I think during the discussion, the committee level, there is a budget left from the seniors in the Senior Advisory Committee or for the Seniors Advisory Committee. My question for you is just in terms of approving this now, there's no... Um, understanding of like what the request will be in terms of location or or uh, extra budget allocation that may be needed i think you said that i think the committee was discussing there's five thousand dollars available in reserves for the seniors advisory committee so is there understanding that the committee that'll be enough to cover the cost of operating the the event will there be 
Um, if council approves it today, will there be, I guess there'll be further discussions at the community table, but I guess my question is like, what's the uh, total ask that's gonna come to council to host this event or have this event? Um, and I think that's where there's some just hesitancy to say, yes, we're gonna have the event next year when we really have no understanding of size, scope, cost, or anything like that to do with the event. There's, I believe, $5,150. Not sure how we gained $150, but um, I believe that's in the reserve. And we feel that that will be enough to put the um, health fair on. We'll be getting sponsors and there'll be people paying for booths and things like that. We would be asking for a venue. So I think and perhaps some staff time, but um, as far as anything else, I'm not sure at this point. Councillor Dubik, do, do you want to go next? So, so just very similar questions to that. Um, and, and wondering if if the timing for the recommendation is, is right, like should we be, like, so, so I'm very happy to support um, you know, I, I think, you know, um, you know, being able to to celebrate and bring people together around um, sort of age friendly um, sort of theme is 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 important. Um, so so supportive and just wondering a little bit just what the deputy mayor has stated. As far as yeah. timing of the request, they say that you should start planning at least a year before the event. OK. Now, I think what could happen is there's an amendment made that you approve in principle and that that at least allows us to start looking into it with, in more detail and come back with a, a an update at, in, in a few months. That's up to council. Mayor McQueen? I don't know if you're asking that that it'd be tweaked to say like a report to come back with the time right time frame and the, what's involved. But who's gonna who's like who's gonna run with this? Who's gonna senior advisory committee? So so you guys will like your group will will set it up, rent the facility, yeah, get the speakers, get the okay. Wow, well, I don't think we have much to lose if it if it if you want to run with it. Then sure, I mean our health is a very important part of our life. If you don't get good health, you're pretty well, right? So. I, yeah, if, if your committee is going to take that on, I, I think there was one in Own Sound, it's his own sound, but I think one of them has been in Own Sound for quite a few years. But uh, yeah, thank you. It's like a lot of things. Gray Highlands is right in the middle of mm -hmm. a lot of areas that do things Hanover, Collingwood, mm -hmm. South. And it's the best Shelburne. part of that. It's the middle of the world. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Dooley? Sorry, so I I'll, I will just make a slight amendment to that. Um, you know, maybe just to say, you know, we approve in principle, and you know, we're just happily, you know, just awaiting to see the event event plan. Okay, we have a seconder for that. No, everybody else. Okay, seconded by Councillor Lowhead. Any discussion on the amendment? Mayor McQueen. So if you're approving it by, in principle. If you're approving it in principle, then you're looking for something else to come back. There has to be something to come back. If you're, if you're okay, that we're okay with it at this point. Okay, mm -hmm. but we need to know more. Is that what you're sort of asking to you? Yeah, I think so. And and we could reach out to Southgate and and perhaps Collingwood and just find out what their expenses and and requests of their municipalities were and come back with a updated request mayor mcqueen go ahead so i wonder if, it, if you approve it by in principle and that a follow-up will come back to council like you need we need something to come back yeah, yeah. right so does that need to be i think i think that's assumed okay as long as it's yeah. okay just as long as there's not a hanging yeah out there that okay there's always a um it's put on to the the seniors advisory committee agenda the motion that was made so we'll be discussing that so yeah, not, yeah. not this next meeting. Our next meeting is 
this so like, Monday. at some point at some point where we have to firm up our support like in principle waiting on something mm -hmm. so we're, at some point we're going to have to yeah. okay we're we're good right so that's what that's the way we're worried about leaving it as principle because it's there's still a follow-up that needs to come back that we need to say okay we're okay with it now because it's almost like we're okay with it but we need to we need, we need more information yeah and that will come back <laughs> Okay. Are you wanting to speak again? <laughs> we're now keep in mind we just voted we're discussing the amendment, yeah. not the actual. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because just in terms of that amendment, I just want to provide a little bit of clarity of thought there. It's it's just so that we're clear on the ask of, of council, right? Because you know, you know, if if the you know, if their thought is, you know, they want, you know, 200 hours of staff, okay, maybe we don't have two hours, 200 hours of staff, right? So, so it's just, you know, it's it just, um, just, we're just waiting for a clear ask of um, what they wish from the municipality. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm still... <laughs> Clerk Nostein, I'm gonna to have to write it down here. <laughs> Thank you, um, through you, Chair Allen. I just wanna be clear on what the amendment actually is because there's been a lot of kind of discussion. Just add in principle. That's it? We're I not think. asking for a report back? Well, you, you could add, if it's okay with the mover and seconder, that the committee report back with with a, yeah, a updated request or something like that. Okay. Is that okay with the... Who, I can't remember now who moved that. Okay, right. Because we'll want to confirm the date too. And so there's be a lot of things that have to come back. So Clerk Van Alstein, when you're ready, if you could read the amend amended mo no just the amendment i guess uh thank you through you chair allen um the amendment is that the main motion be amended to add the words in principle in principle after the word approve and add at the end that the seniors advisory committee present a plan to council okay is everybody okay with that amendment okay all those in favor that's carried and now the main motion as amended Please, Clerk Van Alstyne. <laughs> Sorry, my apologies. It took me a moment. It's okay. <laughs> Um, that council approve in principle at Gray Highlands Age Friendly Health Fair to take place on June 11th or June 25th, 2025, and that the Seniors Advisory Committee present a plan to council. Okay, thank you. Any discussion on that amended motion? Okay, all those in favor? Let's hear it, I think. Yeah. Okay, 9.3, Lady Bank Schoolhouse designation. The council approved bylaw 2024-029 being a bylaw to designate the dwelling located at 468083 concession 12B Feversham, Gray Highlands, as a heritage property. Mayor McQueen. <laughs> Councillor Wickens. <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion? Okay, Mayor McQueen. There was one comment that was made, and I'm not sure where it came from, that this is the original location of this school. And I'm looking at Councillor Wickens, who uh, maybe have, but I think it is. Uh, is there anything to, there was a question whether it was moved or whatever, because I know the um, Lady Bank Church was there, but it was removed, according to the history book, at, at a certain time, because it's just a cemetery there now. So it just, it was raised and... I have a quick comment. Well, well, has any if comment. I may, this uh, the schoolhouse really isn't located at Lady Bank to start with. It's about a mile to the east. And there was a church at Lady Bank, which was removed. Yeah. 
So, so it's the schoolhouse, but it's not actually in Lady Bank. It's a no, mile it's to, to the east. Yeah. All right. Mayor McQueen. Just a little bit tidbit, though. I think in uh, like Clayton's house, when they used to do voting in Osprey, they voted in the house, but it was called, a poll was called Lady Bank. Just a little tidbit of information. That's good information to have. <laughs> okay. No further discussion. All those in favor? That is carried. And Mayor McQueen. Back to you. Okay, uh, thank you. And we got uh, eleven sixteen. Can we push it a break to eleven thirty? Is that fourteen minutes? Give you enough time? Or you want eleven? Or you want eleven thirty five? Eleven thirty.
All right, welcome back everyone. And so we finished up in section nine, so we're moving forward then in section 10. And I'll pass, this is for building and economic and community development. So I'll pass the chair over to uh, Deputy Mayor Nielsen. Thank you very much, um, Mayor McQueen. Um, we are at 10.1, fees and charges, parks and recreation, schedule F. This is a slightly different. There are two different um, uh, items here for the same thing for the uh, reference to the fees and charges. But this one is the council received ECD 2411 for information and that council approved the definition of prime time hours for municipal hall rentals from Friday at 1600 hours to Sunday at 23,500 hours. And that council approved the definition of prime time hours for municipal arena rentals as Friday at 1800 hours to Sunday at 23,500 hours, as well as Monday to Thursday from 1800 hours to 23,500 hours daily. Can I get a mover and a seconder? Moved by Councillor Dubik, seconded by Councillor Allwood. Any discussion on the motion on the agenda? For those who don't work in military time, we're talking 6 p.m. to midnight, technically 11.59. Councillor Allen is considering his question, and Councillor Allen. Well, I was just wondering why it separates those out because it's isn't it all every day, Friday to Sunday, and then Monday to Thursday. So, balls and repeats. So, uh, to uh, Director Harris, let's say manager. Just for, just for the arena. Yep. Just wondering if you can explain the reasoning for the motion to be separated out. Yeah, I have to stand up. Um, the halls and arenas are separate. So we used to have the uh, arenas as prime time from 4 p.m. till midnight on weekdays, plus the weekend hours. And we have recommended that we modify that to 6 p.m. because we're not getting much uptake between 4 and 6 p.m. on weekends. I hope that clarifies it. I just wanted to be really clear in the report itself. Originally, we didn't, I don't think those hours were very clearly spelled out. So we just wanted to be very clear on what prime time versus non-prime time for the two different types of rentals were. Councillor Allen, follow up? It wasn't between the two, between halls and arenas. It's just saying for the arenas, Friday at 8, oh, I see. So it's yeah. including all day on the... On okay. the weekends. Just wondering why you separated those, but I see it. So it's all day Saturday and all day Sunday. Okay, got it. I just like to understand for a. That is a good habit to have, Councillor Allen. Understand before we vote. Uh, any other questions or comments regarding the motion that's on the floor? Seeing none, then I'll call the question. All those in favor? Oh, did you have a question, Councillor Wickens? I'm sorry. Yep, Councillor Wickens. Just wanted to make a comment. Um, right now, just in discussion with our uh, treasurer, we're running about a six hundred thousand dollar deficit. Just for clarity, Councillor uh, Wickens, the next item is the one with the actual fees. This is just discussing the time change. Oh, so ten point two is the fee I'm, change, and I'm, I'm sure there'll be a further debate on that one. I'm I'm very sorry. That's to quite all right. Have. Uh, it's a jump, fun agenda. Jumped ahead. I, I'll, I'll refrain from my. Uh... I will look to you right away with the next item, Councillor Wickens. Um, so this one is just specifically on the time change regarding prime time and non-prime time hours. Any other questions on that? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? That is carried. Moving along to item ten point two. Um, that the council approved the bylaw 2024-032 being a bylaw to further amend the fees and charges bylaw 2012 to, to uh, sorry, 2012-063. Um, this is regarding the actual fees and charges in Schedule F, which relate to the fees and charges of the arenas and halls. That is the motion that's recommended. Move, Mayor McQueen, do you want to make it in? Well, I, I, Mike? I guess we could put it on the floor and then we can have an amendment. My point is, is I, I, I want to have some discussion around the ice rental. Please. I'm positive we're going to have this conversation around the ice rental fees, which is fantastic. Um, 
just do we do we want to get this on the floor and then we can make amendments to it and then that might be cleaner for um, everybody involved. So if I can just get a mover and a seconder to put it on the floor, uh, Councillor Wickens and Councillor Dubik. Um, so now the items on the floor. Um, before I go to you, Mayor McQueen, Councillor Wickens, you did preemptively want to discuss this one. So maybe I'll go to you first and then we'll go to Mayor McQueen. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Nielsen. Yeah, so this puts uh, puts me in a, in a very hard position, uh, really rock in a hard place. So as I was saying, just in discussion with uh, our treasurer, right now we run a deficit of $600,000 per year, that's for all four arenas, is paid directly from the levy. That's, that's, uh, that's a lot of money. And I can, I under, I can understand everybody's, you know, if you got three kids in hockey, it's going to be another six hundred bucks on top of what you're already paying. And then you've got the you got the folks on the other hand too that don't that don't run the arenas or don't use the arenas at all. That's uh that's a pile of money to just put on the the tax load. Uh, the arena rates haven't been set for 12 years. <clears throat> and uh, one thing we, that, well, uh, we may have got it. Maybe I missed it, but we didn't have any comparators to, uh, and I see we're probably going to be higher than than some, maybe all of them for minor hockey. Um a lot to discuss and think about. I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Wickens. Uh, Mayor McQueen, you had raised your hand. Yeah, th thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. And through you, I I want to get some clarity. And if if uh, if um, the Director of uh, of uh, Economic Development and Facilities could come to the podium, I want to first get clarity to it, that everybody's on the same page. Okay. So, um, and, and thank you through you, thank you to Michelle for coming up because I think it's important that we're all looking at all the apples and and the, and the oranges equally. So currently, right now, I guess to you, through you, Mr. Chair, to to Michelle, is what is the current rate today? Director Harris, you want to speak to the current rates? Because I know there is different rates for each of the halls. Thank each you. The um, through the chair to council, in the last report, we did include the old fees and charges bylaw. But for clarity, um, and I'm going to quote all rates, not excluding, not including HST, so excluding HST. Okay, just to, through you, Mr. Chair, because I think this morning we from the delegation, we were quoted 105. That includes HST. So, so I would prefer we stay with HST because it was quoted with the HST and the new rate was also quoted in a lot of the correspondence was 146 or 149. And I'm assuming that's with HST as well. So, so I, I just want to stay with HST just so we keep it at the level. And I'm and just and just through that, uh, there was a chart that was uh, forwarded to us. And I'm presuming, and I guess this is question of clarity through you, is is the rates that are comparable, are they include in H HST? Some include HST, so we, <laughs> I, I will tell you exactly what that is because okay. we pulled the chart. Um, the rates that I sent to council mm. earlier today that were our comparators, North Bruce Peninsula's includes HST. Okay, that's 115. 115 for prime and 103 for non-prime. Right. Aaron Eldersley, does not include HST, 142 and 83. Chatsworth does not include HST. The rates are 140 and 115. Southgates do not include HST, 129 and 86. Right. Um, South Bruce Peninsula, as we can't find whether their rates included HST or not, we've been doing a bit of digging and haven't found that. Okay. Um, Georgian Bluffs do not include HST, 136 and 84. 
Meat herd's one of those ones you can't figure out whether it includes or it doesn't. Um, West Gray does not include HST, 134 and 80. And Owen Sound does not include HST, 195 and 139. So that most of these would not include HST. That's why we put in our fees and charges bylaw that it does not include HST. Member Green? Okay, so the current rate as of 2023, before, before and after HST is how much? So the prime time rates, we had different prime time rates. A different arena. Are you only interested in the group rates? Because you keep quoting 105, which is the group rate. Is that the one? Yes, yes because it, I okay. think a lot of our correspondence came from is the delegations for this morning. And we're, we're the Just group for rate. clarity for that. The, the rate that is being quoted is including a 20% discount that did exist. Yeah. Right. Does exist because it hasn't changed officially yet. That does exist. Um, the, and so their rate was discounted to the 92 and so thank you. Um, the, it wasn't exactly 20%. We had a minor sports organization or a group or volume rate as we call it that was quoted at, and they were referencing $105 that included HST. Yep. So without HST, that is $92.90. We, in the original report that went through to council last meeting, we staff proposed a 20% discount, which would have brought that group or organized sports rate to $110 not including HST. With HST, that would have brought it up to 124.30. Okay. So then, uh, in summary then, as you said, with if the 20% was reinstated, as, 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 as suggested, the before HST is 110, so it would be going from 92 to 110. Presumably, whether they the groups can claim HST then in retrospect, it would be like 105 to 124 with the HST included. So that's going up $20, um, $20. And our rates haven't changed since 2012, right? Thank you. The um, All of our rates are 2012. Um, we did change, those were our prime time rates. The group rates did change in 2017. So the okay. volume discount did change in 2017. And what was that? Sorry I don't you. know. Um, it, it went up to, that's for non-prom time. Sorry, I'm just, there's so many charts here. Just bear. Yeah, it's very confusing. Sorry, the non-prime time rates changed in 2017. But the, the high volume sports didn't change? Nope. Okay, okay. So then just, just to finish up here, like I said, just want to make sure all the facts are on the table. So then the numbers that you quoted uh, with the other communities, Aaron Ellis, Chesley, is before HST. We're not sure if they charge HST. You do not charge. They have to charge HST. Yeah, yeah. They are just not quoted with HST. So some of these numbers are HST on top of these numbers. So. Exactly. Most of them are. Okay. Uh, there was a, a, a comparable to... The town of Collingwood at 129. Is there any clarity on that one? We did not compare with town of Collingwood. We right. just went with our group here. So I don't have those rates in front. And there was one also, the Blue Mountains. Did we ever get a number on the Blue Mountains? I oh, didn't have that. Okay. So um, just following, carrying on through that. Thank you very much for that, Michelle. Just to, it's, it's, we, we need to streamline it. So then it's one number, whatever, whatever. So it makes it a little bit more easier to understand. Obviously the other, other facilities are all over the place as well. Um, so we all received a lot of communication. I'm not sure a lot of emails and we had the deputation this morning. I've had conversations. I had phone calls about it's the huge increase all of a sudden, obviously comments came back if it was increments over a period of time it would have been you know you digest little bits at a time so if it hasn't changed in 2012 obviously it's a big increase from uh 92 to 110 if if we stay with that same discount so that's you know eight that's 18 dollars per hour increase if i got my math right 
versus uh, the with the twenty percent with no discount, it would be at one forty six with HST. I think or was there was two quotes. There was one forty six, and then there was a one forty nine. I want to get that clarity as so well. So the the big quote is the one hundred and thirty six dollar. So one hundred thirty two plus HST is the one forty six. One forty six. Okay, because there was a one forty nine quote this morning. So I just want to get that clarity. Okay. With HST, the new prime time rates would be one forty nine sixteen, okay, including so HST. Correct. Right. Okay. So then, um, I mean, there's a lot of information that was shared this morning and conversations that I have had. Probably no different than others here on the table was um, was youth. Well, we heard it all this morning about the part how how to keep youth engaged and having it facilities moving and stuff. And it, you know we're the decision makers around this table. It's, it's, it's come back to us saying that. Um, and I also had conversations about, is there other things that we can help fundraise? Is there other things to keep the cost down for our people that play hockey? Do we have a number for the number? Okay. We have time and it was quoted. Was it 530 hours was the Osprey? Do we have it overall of all our facilities? What that, usage of the, the the group rate for the sports groups like it was quoted i think osprey was 505 30 where are my notes here 530 to 550 50. hours specifically from osprey. osprey do we have an overall we, with that the last meeting we had the hall usage report that showed how much ice time was being used in total i don't no. know if staff have that ability to pull that number right now i'm just thinking from the sports groups the discounted right. at the 20 what, what i'm saying that. is i don't know if staff can Pull that number right now. No. Okay. No, I don't Internet have that information immediately right. available. Okay. So presumably, if if Osprey is at three thirty, sorry, five thirty to five fifty, Flusherton is a is a busy arena. I would assume Rockland is a busy arena. Markdale has some hockey with uh, shooting stars. So it would be nice to know that number. Anyway, my point is is all, I, I guess our whole, all our four facilities do have a lot of usage on that sports group discounted rate because they are involved i guess i'm just trying to tease that out i think my director harris there might be a difference with rockland who does have user groups that do probably rent more than 50 hours there's the saturday uh, hockey league system at rockland but they might not have the same um level of minor hockey sports that exists right. markdale flesherton and osprey all have significant usage from our minor hockey systems that exist um Michelle, I don't know if you have another comment to that. Thank you through the chair to council. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Nielsen, you're correct. The major groups are primary users, the sports groups of Flesherton, Markdale, and Osprey. Rockland is a different yeah. um, makeup. There's a lot of individual, small community groups that use it. Doesn't mean their usage is any lower. It's just a completely different type of usage. And we will be doing a year-end report on the entire ice season, which doesn't run calendar year. It runs from September through to the end of March. Um, but if you recall last year, we did a full report on that and we broke out the major user groups for each arena so that you could see. Yeah, what that looks like. And I think it was quoted there a bit this morning. So just following up with that deputy mayor in the sense that I think the Rockland arena ha always had a little bit of a different rate because it was a little smaller. It was a little smaller and, and at, at that time. So I guess uh, three things come to mind is one, uh, some of the feedback I got was they, they could accept a, a rate, but not all at once. Like, like it's, it's, and I, I think one of the things that we probably would agree with if, if there was a cost of living or something that, you know, kept pace a little bit would be, digestible but it's a, it's a huge that's it's really well we've heard quotes of the 200 the 200 uh, dollar per per uh, child increase and i know they have to go out almost now because you have to get that registry you know in the spring usually when hockey's done you sign up for the fall hockey because they need to know and they need to book the time and for staff and all that kind of stuff so one is is i think we need to look at this uh again Two, I think there needs to be a cost of living uh, component to it that be reviewed every five years, that you make sure you are in check with other facilities because you want to be competitive. You don't want to be, you know, you want because you're competing with other facilities as well. Uh, thirdly, I've always had the thought 
that if there was an internal league or something that that created hockey between our facilities, I think there could be a discount rate for that. If there was an internal group that was, you know, you know, years and years ago, they used to have room ball. They'd, they'd play like there'd be you know, all these facilities. They'd be playing, you know, and, and it's not minor hockey, but it's sort of a separate league that would, you know, use our facilities. It's sort of something that's out there. I think it's something that there's it, just been conversations about it, but I think, to get maybe something like that going, maybe a, a, a bigger discount to to try to spur on a, a, a league within our. We have four arenas, you know. How do we spur on activity, you know, within it? Just an idea. Last comment, Mr. Chair, is I think, uh, and, and no fault of anybody, we 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 had our facilities. We came through COVID. It was challenging times. There was limitation. I think at some point we need to sit down. And I got this as well with the groups and have a, a, a conversation or a discussion of how we all move together. And I think Councillor Wickens brings a really good point. It's costing us a lot of money to run these facilities. It's cost us or look at our budget. This is, this is was a challenging year. But I think as we hear, we need to, you know, let's work with our community groups to see if we can come up with the solutions and not the barriers that we, you know, we're, we're all, we're all, have to deal with, you know, insurance costs, all this stuff keeps, keeps affecting us. And, you know, just what happened on April 1st is there's more cost to heat our facilities. There's a lot of different things. We don't get the rebates, I must say. So I'm going to throw it out there. That those are some points that I think, uh, but the bigger one is I think we need to review the, the, the removing of the 20% and go back to some formula of giving those groups, a, you know, Back to more reasonable, but is is if as as Michelle is saying, if we went back to the twenty percent with HST, that would go from uh, one hundred five to one twenty four. So I think that's maybe maybe a good start. So I would be prepared to move a motion, but I just wanted to put the discussion. I'll let other people make that comment. There's, there's lots as well. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Queen, for that. There's a, there's a lot there. there. There was a lot there. There's a lot of questions asked. There's a lot of comments made. Um, Councillor Dubik, I did have your hand raised prior. So if you have uh, comments now, uh, follow up to the Mayor McQueen or just comments for yourself. Um, so, so, so maybe just two quick things. I, I, I did raise my hand just because of the comparator comment made. So, so I think it is important to understand where do we play kind of in the marketplace, you know, versus our, our peers. Um, so, so first, I do want to just thank the community. Um, first, you know, for, for, you know, for all your emails and, uh, for your, um, for your comments this morning at, at the top of the, at the top of the meeting, um, you know, I think the pickle that we're in is just the fact that, you know, I think it's been already stated is we haven't been increasing our rates and we haven't been reviewing our pricing, um, on a consistent manner. And so we haven't been, you know, so we haven't touched our pricing, you know, for 12 years. So, so that's a big gap. So when we're trying to, um, you know, catch up, you know, what the call it the market rates, you know, at this point in time, after 12 years, it does feel like a big shock. It's a big jump and, and, and completely understand because it, it feels like it comes out of left field for, for our community when they're, when they've been so ingrained, you know, with paying a certain amount, et cetera. So, um, so I think there is, you know, I think we do need to think about how we, maybe the pace, you know, that we increase our rates. Um, you know, I think, you know, and it's also sort of kind of landing, where do we want to, you know, um, establish our rates? What has been presented um, and, and what we do have in front of us actually aligns up, um, you know, with our peers, Um and I, I would say in terms of in terms of the the base numbers, when we think about that twenty percent discount, I think that's a really important piece um, of the puzzle here. Um, I do support the twenty percent discount. Um, I think you know supporting minor hockey, et cetera, um, is important because we you know I think you know what we've heard is there is no programming by our our municipality because it's just that would be an extra expense, um, more staff, et cetera. And so, you know, still staying lean without no programming, that means that we're looking towards the community to help fill that void. And when you have minor league um, 
hockey stepping up to provide programming for our youth, you know, we we should be helping to support that and contribute to that. And I think that's what that discount does represent. Um, and when you take a look at the, again, our peer set, everybody else is also providing that. So I would ask, you know, those that don't support it, well, you know, what is that argument to be outside of that market pricing besides just raising revenues, period? That's not, to, in my opinion, that's not enough of an argument. Yes, we have a deficit. We know that. It's a bigger issue. It is $600,000 per year. That's a way bigger number than the um, than the discount that we're providing, right? So you have to keep, we have to keep the amounts of dollars in mind. Six hundred thousand dollar, you know, sort of our, our deficit versus, um, you know, sort of what that I will call it that, you know, the um, programming pricing that we're put, you know, that we're supporting because we don't we don't actually um, provide it ourselves. Um, so I guess just to wrap it up, I'm in, I'm in support to ensure that we provide the twenty percent uh, discount for minor, you know, for our big users. Um, and it is also a benefit for us because they sign up that ice time for us in advance. And so we do have security that we're actually booking a lot of our ice time. You know, without that security, I mean, you know, they, you know, to think that always to think that, oh, well, you know, they're a captive audience, so they have to come here. Well, there are other options as well. Right. Th th I think, you know, th that that is a reality. Is, uh, I think a ra reality as well. So I do support the discount. Um, and in terms of the pacing of the increase, I mean, maybe that's something that we need to consider. I'll look at that. Thank you for that, Councillor Dubik. I've seen Councillor Lowhead, Councillor Allen, and now Councillor Allwood all have their hand raised. So Councillor Lowhead, and then Councillor Allen, and then Councillor uh, Allwood. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So uh, yeah, I'd also like to, to thank the um, public for their input here, obviously, we we received um, a number of very passionate uh, emails uh, over the weekend, and I'm glad we did. You know, um, it really helps us to to craft good decision making here at this table. And, um, you know, it was said in a couple of the emails that it, you know how important community is and how important minor hockey is. I think we all realize that at this table, we we absolutely know that um, that these arenas are the focal points of so many of our little communities. Um, and this isn't um, this move wasn't a, a means for for council and municipality to to you know close these arenas or, or preclude people from participating in minor hockey, but you know the opposite. We're really trying our hardest to keep these arenas open um, and uh, and bring ourselves in line with with our neighbors. Um, and the the number that we came up with is very closely in line with our neighboring municipalities. Um, and so that was the thought. You know that said. Uh, we've heard loud and clear that this rate jump is too big, too too fast, um, which I, I understand. Uh, you know, the cost of living, things are difficult right now for everybody, and that includes the municipality of Grey Highlands. Um, so that said, uh, you know, I'm glad we're having this conversation now. I hope we take an opportunity to recraft our, our rates, um, and I hope we take an opportunity to have discussions with the major user groups as well going forward so we can come up with a good plan uh, that ensures that we're able to keep these arenas open and keep minor hockey uh, alive and well throughout our communities in Great Highlands. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Lowhead. Councillor Allen. Thank you, Chair Nielsen. I just see we just got an email from somebody saying if we want to keep the arenas open, we have to increase rates. So if there is one person out there that is okay with rates going up. But speaking of rates, um, I looked up the old bylaw, um, and Markdale and Flesherton is currently $143, and it's proposed to go to $132. Osprey is $132, and it, so it will remain the same. And Rockland is $115, proposed to go to $132. So uh, I'm just questioning the, the increase. There's no, to me, there's no increase in rates because the 115, we're gaining $17, but the other one, we're not gaining anything. The other two, we're losing $13 an hour on each of those. So I'm not sure how this is going to generate more income. 
um, because the three busiest arenas are actually being reduced in, or staying the same. Um, so the only increase is the loss of the 20% other than for Rockland. So I, I, I think we need to revisit this um, and then look at that hourly rate and obviously also look at the decision to, to discontinue the 20% um, discount for 50 hours plus or the minor sports. Um, I, I think this is maybe a little bit too much to try to hash out here in a council meeting. Thank you. Thank you for that, Paul. Allen. Before I go to Director Harris, I think the the discussion is the fact that there currently exists a uh, group rate for user groups that do um, use a significant time of our ice arenas, and it is that's the biggest um, challenge for the user groups for like the delegations this morning and the emails we re received. Um, to your point, the actual hourly rate that we're charging hasn't really increased a significant amount. It's the fact that the discussions leading up to today has been to change that rate for the minor hockey. So it's not general users that are emailing us saying, don't mess with the uh, the rates of the arenas. It is the user groups, those, those large groups that are the minor hockey systems that exist and the um, other uh, group systems that exist within the municipality. Um, sure. Just okay. a real quick follow-up. So was the intent of going to $132 across the board just to get them all the same, or was it also to increase revenue? Director Harris. Thank you. You answer both parts of Councillor yeah. Allen's. If, if I may, just before I go to that, the $132 hour rate, dollar rate that you referenced for Flesherton and Markdale prior, that did not include HST, or it did include HST, were in in rep recommending 132 plus HST, which would bring it up to 149.16. So every prime time rate would go up, some of them more than others. The rationale for having one flat rate across the municipality um, was twofold. Um, first of all, the cost of operations for our arenas, and we were asked to look at starting to look at recovering operational costs, knowing we'd never recover them all. The cost to operate an arena is substantially the same, whether it's in Rockland or Flesherton and Markdale. The other thing we repeatedly hear is from ratepayers and the public when we get emails, and I suspect you get them too, is that there is just one ratepayer in Grey Highlands and we should all have the same number of days open per week. We should all have the same number of public skating hours available. So if we want parity across, the rationale was, if everybody wants the same level of service, the fee should be the same for all arenas. Um, and finally, the other point is we, we suggested, um, we've seen arenas pitting themselves against each other now in communities. We saw it with the rec master plan that people are, communities are starting to entrench. And when we put this proposal through for council consideration, and at the end of the day, it's up to the council to make their decision. We propose this through a gray highlands lens, not through a specific um, community lens or ward lens, but through a gray highlands lens. Thank you for that, Director Harris. And before I go back to you, Councillor Allen, um, one of the big changes to the proposal fee structure that was given at the last council meeting was to um, unify the policy across so that it wasn't just the rates that got uniform to make it more understanding of what the rates were for your for your different levels of um, hall usage, be it small, medium, or large halls, the arena usage and stuff. It was also trying to streamline the discounts that existed for those. So all those uh, portions, it was a, a policy change that would then be easier for if we did do uh, minor increases, the rest of the policy would be able to stay stable and continue to move forward. Be, everybody would be treated with the same lens. Um, further to what Mayor McQueen has said earlier uh, regarding the, you know a, a need or even Councillor Dubik, the same thing, a need to um, 
implement some kind of um, um, cost of living increase to the fees on a regular basis or yearly basis. So that way we don't end up in the same pattern again, where we're having to do a significant change in our fee structure like we're doing right now. Um, just as a point, uh, Councillor Allen, did you have a follow-up from Director Harris? Okay, so then now I have Councillor Allwood. Uh, thank you, Chair Nielsen. Yeah, I mean, the uh, I, I think as our uh, Director Harris pointed out, I mean, the uh, part of the intent was to standardize and uh, establish parity between our arenas. There's been lots of talk uh, amongst our voting public about having too many ice surfaces. I personally have always supported maintaining our ice surfaces in Gray Highland, the four of them. The uh, discussion I've seen at the uh, the council table, uh, I'm not sure council was unanimous on that opinion that uh, we needed to have four ice services. Certainly the master rec plan called for that. So when I was thinking and I, you know, I, I talked about and was quoted in some of those emails as saying uh, the people that use the arena should pay for, pay for, help pay for them. Um, that, that offsets the sort of thing that Councilor Allen just brought up one email. There's more than one email where we have rate pairs that say, uh, you know, we have too many arenas to close those ice surfaces. Uh, I'm, I, I don't agree with that. I think they are important for all the reasons that those open forum people spoke up today about the, uh, youth programming and things like that. But the reality is that there, there are costs associated with that. Um, the unfortunate part is that, it, you know, it, it's coming, it's coming one <laughs> fell swoop. And, uh, it, you know, it does, it does present a significant increase to the, uh, the hockey players and, and hockey families. But uh, I'm, I'm, uh, there, there are a couple of numbers. I wonder if I could just ask our treasurer to confirm. We have a report uh, later on in the agenda, the uh, year-end draft year-end report. What, what the actual uh, arena deficit is? Because uh, you know, I've heard a couple of numbers floating around. Um, Director McCarthy. Uh, thank you through you. Um, the projected um, operating deficit for the arenas in 2023 uh, is $587,000. Um, uh, and that's the portion of the arenas that is funded by the levy. Uh, that represents about 65% of the total operating expenses. Sorry, 65%? Correct. Sixty-five percent of the operations of the arenas are current are for twenty twenty-three are levy funded. Correct, and that's excluding uh, any capital um, requirements, uh, and it's also excluding any uh, administrative overhead staff wages. So it's just the operators working at the arenas. Thank you very much for that clarity, uh, Dr. McCarthy. Councillor Allwood, follow up. Oh, yeah, thank you, uh, Chair Nielsen. Yeah, so I mean, these rate increases aren't going to cover that deficit. It's uh, so, uh, you know, the uh, the comments that have been made about um, we don't pay, uh, we don't expect library users to pay for the library, but uh, and things like that, but they do through the levy. The library's paid for through the levy as as are all of our municipal facilities. But I'm, uh, I'm still in favor of the uh, standardization. I'm still uh, in favor of, of that rate increase whether or not we want to uh, reconsider a discount to uh, user groups or booking multiple hours. I guess we'll uh, either have that discussion today or refer to a, a different meeting. But uh, the, the intent was to, my intent was to uh, bring that deficit, you know, bring the cost in line with the deficit somewhat and uh, recognizing that uh, we're, swimming upstream on keeping four arena surfaces open, ice surfaces open. So um, I'm hoping that uh, we can come to some compromise that will we'll address both sides of that coin. The issues we heard today at Open Forum, and we've heard lots of uh, comments in our email feeds. But uh, again, my intent was solely to keep keep those ice surfaces open and, uh, and uh, make sure that our voting public those that don't use the ice surfaces uh, 
realize that the users of those eye services are paying some significant dollars to to use those eye services. So I'll stop there for the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Ness. Thank you, Councillor Allwood. I do have Councillor Allen, Councillor McQueen. Just before I go to Councillor Allen, um, a comment there that uh, Treasurer McCarthy said that I think is sitting in the back of my mind is the fact that that 587000 didn't include capital expenses for the arenas. And we know from our building assessment report, we know from uh, a few other reports that there are some significant capital costs coming to uh, maintain these surfaces uh, and, and the building. So just a, just a comment because that stood in my mind. Uh, Councillor Allen. Thank you. So I reworked the numbers. Mm -hmm. So it, the two are $126 now, and they go to 132. Osprey's 116, and Brockland is 102. Before HST. Before a, so everything's before HST now. So yes, it's for Rockland, it's a significant increase. Um, but I was actually thinking the same thing as, as Director Harris said. People that work at at Osprey or Rockland get paid the same amount of money that um, people that work at Fleshwood and Markdale. Hydro costs the same. It costs the same to fix a Zamboni. Um, and, and I could go on and on. So those are our costs. And I think we need to, to standardize those. The discount, I, I'm supportive of a discount because I do agree that there could be a loss of revenue from people just saying, no, we can't afford it anymore. Um, we want the arenas to be used. Um, if they're not used, that means less staff perhaps. So I can support a, a discount for for the minor sports and, and 50 hours plus, but I'm not sure if I want to go as high as 20%. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Allen, Mayor McQueen. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Nielsen. I think this is really good conversation that we're having. And I just got to re remind everybody we want to cut off at 1220. If we don't get done, then we'll have to take a and go back. Um, a few things. I think, Councillor Dubik, you made a comment that we don't pay somebody to do programming. And there's all, I, I, the comments or, or calls that I had were there's a lot of volunteerism that, that puts this hockey together and I'm looking at the clerk who has probably has two or three kids in hockey as well. And uh, not to draw her into that, but it's, 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 it's where, you know, there's, you know, you're a big part of the program when you are a parent having kids in hockey, there's a lot of things that come together. And uh, one of the other things that was, was carried on to me also yesterday was the cost of refereeing. It's, it's, it, and getting referees is, is, is a challenge too. Um, now, one of the things that came up conversation with me that, uh, and I had kids in hockey and minor hockey, was it used to be where you would pay an admission, watch the game, and you could have 50-50 draws. Now, I understand they, they're not allowed to do that. I guess the clarity from staff is, because that was a revenue, because I and I, you know, the association who's playing, who's, you know, whether it's Rockland or Foster, or, you know, they have to raise so much money and so many kids. And whether someone's fundraised, they got to pay the refs. There's a pot of money they got to they got to generate to to carry that through the season. And so I remember, you know, when, when kids were in minor hockey, you pay admission to watch your own kids' game, but it was a generator, and there was a 50-50 draw, which was going back into that help offsite. And I've also heard that there are kids out there that can't afford, and so they actually fundraise so kids that can't afford it can play hockey which I think is, you know, is a big thing, you know, and hearing, hearing that, and, you know, it's, it's tough times. It's, it's, it's just so many things taking the funds away. So can we, is there, is there a clear, and I guess this goes, and maybe, maybe, maybe that's for other comments, but it was one of the things of a few things that was said. And I just know it, because if we can get back to allowing them to charge a mission and, and 50, 50, that is a, that is a, it generates maybe $150 per game, which helps. Right. And so I'm going to move a motion that we uh, we implement the 20% discount for uh, minor hockey over 50 hours uh, usage um, that for the 2024 season and that we look at you know, cost of living and other things. But I think right now 
they're they're going out to register. They need some continuity for the season coming up. And let's have a bigger conversation and maybe include the groups and work at this together. So my motion will be that uh, we move a motion that we support a 20% discount for the minor hockey or for the sports, so, however that wording is, over 50 hours okay. for the 2024 season. Two things for clarity there, Clerk um, Van Alstein. The motion at the last meeting was uh, there was a motion made to remove the 20% discount. First, I just want to clarify, is this a reconsideration or not? And then second, so this would actually be an amendment, Mayor McQueen, because there is a motion on the floor. So that's fine, but I'm just yeah, clarity for right. reconsideration or not. Um, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, this is something I looked into as well because I had a feeling it was coming up. <laughs> um, in this instance, because it was removed from the main motion and once the main motion was passed, this was not in it, this is not a reconsideration. If we had have approved it and then we wanted to take it away, then it would be a, a reconsideration. So it, it's a weird one, but. Thank you for that clarity. So then the amending motion is to, and I will go to Clerk Van Alstein for you to clarify, just make sure that Mayor McQueen is being captured correctly before we look for a second there. Um, the amendment that I have here is that the main motion be amended to include the words as amended to include an approval for a 20% fee discount for annual group bookings of over 50 hours at any municipal ice arena for 2024-2025 season. Mayor McQueen, clarity? So it's specifically for the season that's coming up? Right. Um, I, I can speak to that further. Yeah, it, yeah. sorry. So, I'm just trying to understand clarity as to why just the, the one season. So part of my rationale is in fairness to the groups, it was like they're, they're at that point and all of a sudden this big hit. Right? It gives it gives us, it, it, it puts it in place for 2024. There's a small increase, but then they can they can they can run with it. It gives us an opportunity to have a, a bigger dive into the whole issue and, and look and, and work with you know, we heard it. They they, they want to work with us too. So let's let's get it get it moving forward for 2024. They know what it, they can base on that, and then we can have a bigger conversation. Um, for clarity, Clerk Van Alstyne, before you, you may have a question of clarity or comment of clarity. We are drafting the bylaw. So how does the bylaw get drafted with like an expiration to a discount? It would be just be posted into the bylaw. So then at a year, at, at the end of that year season, there would be like a repeal of this bylaw or that could put on the clerk list. I'm trying to understand because it's a bylaw that we're passing with a timeline to a discount. So just for clarity, how to process on that one. Um, through you, Deputy Mayor. Um, we would just put that caveat in the bylaw, but at the last council meeting, this is the point that I wanted to bring up. There was um, part of the motion that was passed was to review these fees annually. Yeah. Um, so th these fees are going to include the discounts and everything. So to put in the 24, 25 season is, kind of irrelevant because they have to be reviewed annually anyways but that's up to the mover what they wish to do i, I like leaving it because it sets it to, that they know this okay. is what it also shows that we're going to have a review on it as well so i think it adds clarity okay so we have moved a motion that is now clear as stone um that the item be we had the 20 percent discount looking for a seconder seconded by councillor allen uh, comments on the amendment, uh, Councillor Alwood, and then Councillor Lohan. Uh, thank you, Chair Nielsen. So um, the 132 rate with a 20% discount uh, plus HST would be 119.33 for our minor hockey and groups that book over 50 hours. I believe it's 124.30 yeah. because the 132 with a 20% discount would be 110. Plus 110 plus HST would be 124.30. Was my math, but uh, Director Harris? Thank you. The treasurer's spot. Um, oh, geez. The discounted rate would be from 132 excluding HST to 110. When you add HST into that, it would be 124.30. Thank you for the clarity. Uh, just to put clarity to Councillor Arwood and then follow up, Councillor Arwood. No, I'm just, if 124 is the rate. Uh... Okay, uh, Councillor Lohead, you had your hand raised. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. That was actually going to be my question as well, but um, yeah, just for ultimate clarity here, can we compare that that rate of 124.30 to the current 
rate or the previous year's rate? Forty-nine. Right, and interestingly, we had um, we had a non-resident and a resident rate for group bookings as well. The non or the resident rate for group bookings was one hundred and five dollars an hour, which included HST. So comparing that to one twenty-four thirty. Any other questions on the amendment that's on the floor, uh, Councilor Dubé? Sorry, so, so just to follow up on that thought, that train of thought there. So, so that's roughly, if we just round it up for easy math, that's $20 increase. Um, and then what would the impact be then for, uh, so, I don't, uh, so would you have context to provide an example of how many hours, you know, a minor league hockey plays? And so, so if it's $20, you know, per hour, what's, what's the grand total for the season? So... If I may, um, and I may get the, if I haven't got my mouse here, um, I just sent council a list based on the mayor's previous notes about what user groups are currently paying. So I'll use the shooting stars out of Markdale. From January to December of 2023, they used 116 hours of ice time, um, which would equate to about $2,200, if my math is correct, increase $20 times 116. That would be a treasurer question, probably more than me, but. She's not smiling. <laughs> so the just for clarity from, from you, Councilor DeBiggis, that's okay. Um, Director Harris, the... Um, Osprey Minor Hockey is when it has come forward with the total usage of 530 hours approximately. My math is that that times a $20 increase an hour would be approximately a $10,000 increase for the revenues from that organization for the year, $10,600 at 530 hours. So um, that's one of our, our, I think, I think our largest single user of our services in this power. Council Dubik, do you have a follow-up? So then do we know how much that would be per, you know, per, um, per kid? Or that would depend we, on how many yeah. kids are, in, are enrolled in hockey. And yeah. so that would be we, difficult we don't, we don't for us that. to know. Yeah. I don't think I know how many children. Director Harris does want to field that though. I, I do. I, and I'm not doing the math, but they, they did reference in their delegation today that there are approximately 130 children in minor hockey. Switch. Councilor Dubik's good. So, so yeah, so, so so that makes about sense because then if we were talking, somebody said about you know two hundred dollars per uh, per kid previously before the discount. So with the discount, you know it's below a hundred ish, which okay. just okay. So Councilor Lohead is good now, <laughs> Mayor McQueen. So like I said, thank you, Deputy Mayor. If somehow we can go back to the opportunity for them to charge a mission or have a 50, 50 draw. If they made a hundred dollars, well, no. Yeah. If there's 530 hours, I'm not sure how many of that would be games. Uh, if there was 530 hours. So say there was, say there was a, I don't know, any idea what that would be in home games. Like, so what if, I would just say Mayor McQueen. No, but there's a method to my madness. Okay. So if there's 50 home games times a hundred, that's five thousand dollars that they could generate that helps offset the ten thousand dollars that that is is the increase. So, so I'm just saying is, is I think there's other tools in the toolbox that could offset the increased cost. We're looking at trying to maybe a small increment to cover our costs, but also other tools that help them raise funds. So we have to come back to the big picture. Sure, this is only one what, part of it. What I would say, Mayor yeah. McQueen, is that we are discussing setting our fees. Yep. The ability for the organizations to fundraise, however they collect their funds in order to pay those fees, is not really on our table for debate. They currently, um, Osprey uh, runs and operates the food booth at the Osprey Arena. Markdale Rec runs and operates the food booth at the Markdale Arena. Um, no organization came forward to run a food booth at the Flusherton Arena. Those food booths are used as a fundraising tool. Um, businesses are, are support minor hockey in all the communities with fundraising. Um, they do have lotteries that they do run. Um, they are 
through the rules right now that exist through um, lottery licenses. They can only run one lottery at a time. Um, so there are there are things that are in place for how they are able to fundraise money. I don't think that that's part of our discussion today. Our discussion is funds because all of those fundraising methods are not methods that the municipality can do to raise funds to operate the arena. It's on the organization. And so that's, I think, outside of the conversation today. All my point is, if they're see, if they're seeing an increase of ten thousand dollars, let's make sure they have the tools to raise funds somewhere else. That's all I'm saying. Yes, and we do help support. Um, the municipality does provide lottery licenses for some of the things that they produce, and we do um, through the food booth. They're able to operate the food booths in arenas. Fair enough, Mayor McQueen. But my comment is that that's not part of the conversation today. Okay. Still on the amendment, any further discussion on the amendment to add a 20% discount to user groups over 50 hours for the 2024-2025 season? Seeing none, I will call the question. All those in favor of the discount? Any opposed? Seeing none, that amendment is carried. Back to the main motion as amended. Any comments on that? Not seeing any comments. Um, I'll call the vote. All those in favor of the motion as amended. Actually, you know what? Um, sorry, uh, Clerk Van Alstein, do you just want to read the motion that one last time just so we're all clear? Um, through you, Deputy Mayor Nielsen, to all the council, the council approved bylaw 2024 032, being a bylaw to further amend the fees and charges bylaw 2012. 063 as amended to include an approval for a 20% fee discount for annual group bookings of over 50 hours at any municipal ice arena for the 2024 2025 season. Thank you for that, uh, Clerk Van Alsteins. Any last comments, Mayor McQueen? I think we should push this till after lunch. So we're, we're running time and there could be other thoughts over lunch. We're about to vote. I just I just throw that out there. Is there any other thoughts from anybody that needs to have this? If not, just wanted to make all those in favor of the motion. How's that? How's that when they push it off? All those in favor of the motion? Main motion as amended. That is carried. Um, and then I will put the chair back to you, Mayor McQueen, so you can call lunch. All right. So we're finished the section of the uh, building and economic and community. Oh, no, 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 no. We still have that. Yeah. 10.3 is still on the thing. So we'll, we'll adjourn until uh, 1 o'clock. We do have a presentation at 1 o'clock. Sharp. So I'll eat quickly. <laughs>
Okay. All right. Uh, welcome back, everyone, and to, to our council meeting. Uh, so before we continue on our agenda, I'm going back to the first page of our agenda, and it uh, talks about presentations. And today, we do have a presentation. And uh, Ms. Lynn Silverton, would you stand and uh, do the honors, please? And I'll come back and join you. And the officer is. Is he come? Please come forward, sir. Would you like your kidlets with you? Best place to stand. On your feet. Oh my God. This is what the, the public can see. <laughs> I was right and they were wrong. Please note. <laughs> Okay. So. Trying to match up there. You see the picture? Yeah, it never. There we go. Okay. Done. I'm so sorry. Now, now that we're all organized. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's with great pleasure that uh, the Police Services Board uh, does this last presentation to Police Officer of the Year for Great Highlands. And I have um, the nomination made by Staff Anderson to read for you. I would like to nominate PC Gabe Kokus for Officer of the Year for Grey Highlands. Constable Kokus is a 12-year veteran of the OPP and joined Markdale Detachment in August of 2012. Gabe moved to Grey Highlands when first hired and quickly decided this was where he would make his permanent home and raise his family. Gabe has fully embraced the community and on his days off, can be found in one of the Grey Highlands arena or soccer fields, supporting his children and representing the community of OPP. And you may notice his children and his better half is here. And the other lady, even your mother-in-law likes you. <laughs> oh, we got the right one. <laughs> After work, he demonstrates co commitment, hard work, and leadership, all the positive attributes of a positive role model, fostering a healthy work environment with empathy and approachable, approachable demeanor. Gabe continues to drive service excellence and is, a de and is demonstrated through his professional development and experience in all times, types of criminal investigation. For example, Intoxilizer. Is that right? Technician, coach officer, and drug recognition expert. Gabe continuously demonstrates a commitment to public safety and initiates rides, community events, and participates in focus patrols, encouraging other members to join. Recognizing the importance of team collaboration, on multiple occasions he has switched shifts, canceled time off, and volunteered his time. Off duty, he continues to exemplify the OPP values in the community by coaching and participating in community and OPP events in Martell. Gabe is a dedicated officer who is always ready to lend a hand and assist fellow officers recruits and junior members. He has taken a leadership role in encouraging and mentoring others. He is very knowledgeable in criminal and provincial offenses. He continually updates his knowledge and seeks new opportunities to learn DRE, which is, well, she knows it too, no? I didn't. Breath, tech and coach are among his very many talents. 
Gabe is a leader on this on his platoon in criminal POA and traffic enforcement charges. He routinely takes complex and additional work to assist other members with their workload. He's the very first volunteer to assist any member that needs help or guidance. Gabe is very skilled at positive communication, demonstrates community-centered approach to policing. He conducts follow-up with the involved persons to maintain open lines of communication and has been recognized by our provincial liaison team members for his demeanor and efforts to achieve a safe des desired outcome. For provincial Con uh, Constable Caucus's dedication to his community while on and off duty embodies the ess essence of community policing. PC Caucus makes the public feel at ease, empowered and engaged in keeping in their, their own communities safe. Through his dedication to the public and hard work, PC Caucus keeps the public in Grape Goose and surrounding communities safe and secure. He deserves the recognition of being the Grey Highlands Officer of the Year. This is an award that has been carried out for 20, 20 plus years of the life of the Grey Highlands Police Services Board. And as chair and initiator of the award, it really makes me happy that um, staff nominated Gabe as our final Police Services Board Officer of the Year for Grey Highlands. This says Chairman's Award in recognition of outstanding service by an OPP officer within the municipality of Grey Highlands presented to OPP Constable Gabe Kotkas for the year 2023. And I would like for his family to come forward too. Come and see, come and see what daddy got. There you go. And you know, congratulations to you too, because I am also the uh, wife of a police officer, albeit he's retired safe. Well done. Thank you, everybody, for um, this appreciation. Um, it goes without saying, I think, uh, anybody who does emergency response, uh, there's a, a team backing you up all the way from hard workers and coworkers who are well deserving of any form of recognition like this to family uh, that endures all the, the stress and extra time away from home and and the and the headaches and uh but uh this appreciation goes goes a long way thank you very much we we've we've been in gray highlands for over 12 years now and we genuinely love to be here i think we'll be here for the rest of our careers anyway and raise our family and uh it is a it is an honor to receive this thank you very much sorry i will make I will make a comment and you can probably relate to this. 
as counselors and as the mayor, you sometimes, oh, we're not in the screen, um, you talk to your spouse, but you can't talk to anybody else. So I'm sure your family will relate to that because there's probably things you can talk, well, maybe you can't talk to your spouse, but there's certain things. It's it's not just you as a worker, as an OPP, but it's probably the, the weight that your family has to carry as well. Absolutely. And so I'm, I'm sure you can, you don't have to answer that, but I just know that there's things that can be said and you probably have a stressful day and who do you who do you talk to other than your your family because you can't probably talk to anybody your co your co-workers yeah okay, but there's certain things that you probably can't say that you stress out and you, you sort of talk and then you get it off your chest because sometimes you got to talk to people too and that's usually your family so anyway all the best thank you very much Yep, there we go. Okay. Um, no, I just wanted to make that comment because, as, as you know, as counselors, we 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 talk to our our better half, and sometimes we convey stuff that we can't convey anywhere else. And it's you know, sometimes the uh, partner to your life is is there for those reasons. All right. So going back to our agenda, Deputy Mayor, you're back on cue, and we're going back to item ten point three, and you can take over the chair. Thank you very much, Mayor McQueen. Uh, so we're back into uh, Building and Planet and Community Services. <clears throat> Item 10.3 is a Maxwell Hall Board 2023 year-end report. Uh, the council received ECD 2410 for information. Can I get a mover and a seconder for this report? Moved by Councillor Dubik, seconded by Councillor Allen. Any questions or comments on the report itself? Councillor Dubik. Uh, thank you. So just because um, we were, you know, speaking about fees and rates. I think it's just, um, you know, just for everybody's, you know, information, you know, given that the um, Maxwell does have an MOU with the municipality, um, the community sets their own rates. Um, and so they will be different for the Maxwell community versus um, our other standard kind of run um, facilities. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor uh, Dubik. Um, Director Harris, if I may uh, ask you, sorry to get you to come up again. Um, with that, so the rates that are covered, the revenue stays with the Maxwell Hall Board, um, and then they utilize that to cover um, operational costs. Can you just speak to that relationship? I know the MOU is, uh, is here and, and shown, but um, if you just want to quickly speak to the revenues that are collected and, and how the board uses them. Thank you. Um, through the chair to council, this has been a longstanding MOU with the municipality. And basically the Maxwell Hall board runs the day-to-day -day operations of that facility. And we meet with them yearly to review things to make sure that there's um, things are being done according to municipal standards. And I don't mean that in an over in a difficult way, but we need to make sure that if there's any repairs, we have an ongoing um, conversation and, and relationship with the board. They do set their own rates. They are responsible for small minor repairs to the facility. And if it becomes anything over that, they come back to the municipality and we look at how we can support them and or um, bring something forward for budget. I will make note in the past year, we had some significant um, improvements done to Maxwell Hall in 2023 related to ground water leakage into the foundation. Um, the Maxwell Hall board, even though that was a municipal capital expense in the budget, uh, the Maxwell Hall board, I believe, contributed over $9,000 to that 40, almost $40,000 project. So it's a very reciprocal relationship. We are um, we do ask that they report on revenues because from a transparency point of view, um, and we run into this at our other facilities too, 
um, according to our fees and our procurement bylaw, people have to have an equitable ability to raise fees based on use of municipal assets. So that's why they are required to report. Um, at the next council meeting, you will be seeing a report from the Eugenia group because they operate the boat launch in a very similar fashion. So it's a very um, strong reciprocal relationship. And we commit to meeting with um, both boards at least once a year to make sure we're sort of aligned and working towards common goals. Thank you very much for that, uh, Director Harris. Uh, just for clarity for ourselves and for the community. One other comment I just make is that um, the Maxwell Community Hall Annual Report does state in their own um, portion that um, the memorandum of understanding is in effect until December 2026. Um, I just wanted to know if you can speak to that because it's, uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, through the chair to council at the um, onset of this, we we had talked about in in part to give community groups some level of um, security in their relationships with how they operate. It was suggested, <clears throat> council approved that MOUs run the term of council, so that they run the term of council. There is a clause within those MOUs that, with sufficient notice, either party can terminate the agreement. But the idea was that it makes sense to run this term of council rather than bringing a group back every year um, because we don't know what the council process might be. There might be some other issue on the council agenda that delays it. So that was the rationale. Thank you for that, um, Director Harris. Okay, any other questions or comments? Uh, Mayor McQueen. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, a couple things I think it needs to be pointed and it was mentioned that they pride themselves on you know the money that they raised to go toward i guess 25 percent of the cost of the foundation that they raised also the uh, the other comment i want to make and i've i've had the opportunity now of attending two of their board meetings now that i'm a, a municipal representative on their on their board i think it is important that the last paragraph says that in closing we have positive productive and open communication between our board and the municipality through mike and rob and uh, so I think that's a positive comment as well, because I know Leslie was speaking here this morning, but she does, you know, she's, she has an issue. She calls them up, I have a conversation. So I think there's a, that's, that's to be noted. And I think that's important because if there's an issue, they, they address it right away. And uh, I know Councilor Dubik, you said about the fees and, and uh, they set their own fees, but uh, they are, I guess, in the opinion of keeping it affordable for the, for the community to, to rent. Um, Interesting, they do their own bookings, and from being on that, you wouldn't know this, but um, they have a separate cell phone for the lady that takes the bookings. Like they, that she, that's the number, like that's who you phone, she takes it, and and it's interesting. And uh, I, you know, I would never have known unless I was on the board to even know how they do that, but anyway, she has, she has her own phone <laughs> that they provide, and uh, so it's you know, it's direct, it's there, and she has that. and. Uh, Anyway, you know, they get, like have other boards and committees, they have their trials and tribulations as well, but it seems to be a very strong one. And, and uh, they, you know, they set goals each year of little, I think maybe with Michelle said, like they look after little things and they sort of set those goals and addressing those small things that they can. And, and uh, you know, and, and, and uh, they do have a very active bowling group as we, uh, some of us experienced, uh, thanks to Councillor Wickens. And uh, we were bowling there one night and we experienced their, I think their, Bowling alley that how what did Wayne say it was built in 1956 and it was open in 1957 somewhere and it's been going it's almost like I think 75 years or whatever thereabouts that that bowling alley has been in place because that building was moved there from um, Camp Borden after the Second World War and uh, so to think that there's a bowling alley and in Grey Highlands that's 75 years old is I think it's pretty 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 cool in that sense I think. Deputy Mayor, you were, you were kicking up the heels along with a few others, Councillor Dubik and uh, you know, Councillor Wickens was the old uh, Earl on, on the on the bowling, but uh, we had a good time that night, and it's a good good place to a lot of people to spend time, have a birthday party, have bowling. Uh, there's a lot of different things that they off, offer there. So anyway, thank you for that opportunity to speak. For sure, Mayor McQueen, thank you for your comments. Yeah, and when you look at the fees, it's really pretty reasonable to be able to have a function there as well as utilize that bowling alley, which is been a lot of fun. I've had two of my children's birthday parties at the bowling alley and the kids always come and have an absolute blast. It's also fun because they actually surprisingly enjoy setting the pins. <laughs> uh, 
Um, any other comments regarding the Maxwell uh, report? <laughs> Mayor McQueen. It's a little bit of a tribute, tribute of history. Both, I think, Councillor Wickens and myself spent our kinder, kindergarten years in that facility before they built it at Osprey Community Center, or Osprey uh, uh, Maxwell, sorry, um, Public School. There you go. Thank you for that, Mayor McQueen. Okay, uh, seeing no further comments, then all those in favor of receiving the report for information, that is carried. Um, we did add item 10.4 to the agenda today. I will rephrase that I asked to add item 10.4. So, Mayor McQueen, I think I'll hand you back the chair as I'm the one who added this item. Certainly. Okay, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Thank you very much, Mayor McQueen. So, I did add um, a proposal that we, sorry, pardon me for once, I'm just trying to find my wording. Um, that we refer the financial uh, to the fin sorry the, we refer the financial assistance program round one recommendations that came from the FAP committee to council. They were then deferred until after the budget conversation. We've had the budget conversation. There's been changes to the FAP um, uh, budget amount, and there's been two intakes since then. And so the recommendations that we refer back to the committee so the FAP committee can meet sooner rather than later to discuss these because there are community groups and organizations that are waiting for a response uh, from that committee and from this council as to how the funds will be allocated. So I would like to move uh, that council refer the financial assistance program committee round one recommendations back to the committee for, recon for reconsideration now that the 2024 budget has been passed. And I'll move that. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor, do we have a seconder for that? Councilor Dubik, comments, questions? So Madam Clerk, you captured that? Clearly, okay. And I guess my only comment would be is you probably have the same demand on less than funds. So you have to come up with a matrix of how you're going to deal with that. And yourself, Councillor Dubik, who else is on that in Councillor Owens? Right. As well as community member. Uh, oh, yes. Colin, Colin board. board. Yes. So once that's in place, if this passed, then you can just go ahead and start set, set up that meeting. Exactly. Do you have staff? You have staff support on that as well, right? We have the wonderful Danielle Thompson. There you go. All right. Any other comments? Any other comments on that motion? Seeing that, all in favor? That's carried. Okay. Thank you for that, Deputy Mayor. All right. Uh, moving along to item 11 on our agenda, environmental services. I'll pass the uh, chair over to Councillor Dubik with regards to cart collection survey results. Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so we are at 11.1. The council received staff report ENV.24.09 regarding the cart collection survey results for information. Uh, could I have a move and a seconder? Councillor Allwood and Councillor Wickens. Uh, so the floor is open for discussion. So you have the information in front of you. Um, also within the report, uh, there are links to two surveys. One is a summary of comments, and then the other is the full results. Councillor Allen. I haven't been able to load the second file. The full results. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Yeah, we, we actually are, we seem to be having a link um challenge i tried we, it at home too and it wouldn't work yeah no the first one definitely works the summary of comments um i will look to maybe staff is there a way to um an opportunity to forward that file to council uh, to CEO. the chair thank you um yes we'll have that file forwarded right away okay thank you um, the the summary comments uh, do provide um, very good content as well. Um, any any discussion, Mr. Mayor? I know one challenge <clears throat> that I will say that probably everybody can relate to. If it's the morning of your collection and there's a heavy wind. I've seen it where I picked one a neighbors up three times for the collection just because they're big and like last night was a heavy wind and mm -hmm. I know it's quite a few all over the place even from last night's wind. So that is one thing that can't control, but it is something that happens. And I would say if you see somebody's been over, you have the time stop, pick it up and set back because it gets out into the road or it could cause a, an issue, whatever. But in, 
It does happen. You can't control that. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other discussion? Councillor Lowhead. Thank you, Chair Dubix. Just quickly, if you want to view that link, um, simply uh, delete the HTTPS uh, at, the at the beginning of the link, and it's all viewable there. So just have it start with grayhighlands.civicweb, and you can see through it. Um, you know, that said, um, you know, uh, we heard a whole lot about um, uh, the bins, I think, during the election cycle. Um, and uh, in general, um, I think, you know, most of us have heard uh, going forward, we've, we've stopped hearing much of the dissatisfaction or, or the sort of fear. And we've, uh, although of course it, it hasn't been perfect for everybody, um, but for the most part, the, what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing here in uh, the survey is that it's a, a pretty good system. Um, and so I'm, I'm pretty pleased to see that uh, for most people who are using the bins, that it's, uh, it's been a fairly positive uh, experience. Thank you for that. Mr. Mayor. Just uh, something I uh, also have noted, and I don't know if it says it on the bins. One has a yellow lid, one has a green lid. I've seen it where people got them mixed up. And I, I don't think it really says on it, like a yellow lid versus a green lid. Now the green green lid one's smaller. So, but I have seen them mixed up where they put the garbage in, filled it up. I don't know how the, mm -hmm. our, contractor deals with that but uh and it's easy like because i don't think it, i don't know if in the future if there would be a way of somehow for those that don't it's more or less the ones that don't use them regularly that they come up mm -hmm. from a, like, their weekend place and maybe they've haven't used it for or somebody else or you know, whatever but that's one thing i've noted and i'm just moving forward if there was some way that could identify that this is recycling right. or whatever as, yes, so so appreciate that comment, and um, we are also um, unfortunately tied to what the the vendor right. the supplies. Co correct. So I think the best that we can do is continue to provide that education and think about uh, we want to recycle more. So that's the bigger that is the bigger cart. Um, any further discussion? Um, and maybe just as a, as a reminder, um, you know, so, so one of the, uh, I would say, you know, a key takeaway here was the um, the 29.93% of residents uh, were dissatisfied with a rating of one or two, and that the remainder were either neutral or satisfied, um, you know, which I think is is a very, you know, so that is, um, I think, a, a, a fair uh, amount of satisfaction there. Um, and also, this was taken before we also uh, launched the alternate, um, the waste curbside program, um, which is those for those um, in this, this may line up quite nicely for the seasonal folks uh, who are here. Um, and maybe a reminder, you know, as some of them may be coming back to cottages, cottages, etc., um, that if the carts aren't working for you because you may, may only be here for weekends, we do have the alternate program, which uh, allows you to return your carts for 52 uh, bags of waste, so waste bags, um, which you can then fill up and return for free um, at a waste disposal site. All right, so if there is no further discussion, I will take a vote, those in favor, and that is carried. Thank you, um, and I'll put the uh, over back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Dubik, for uh, chairing that portion of the meeting. Uh, section 12, with regards to finance, so I'll pass the chair over to Councilor Elwood. Uh, thank you, Member McQueen. Um, item 12.1 on the agenda then is the 2023 preliminary operating year-end financial report, and the motion would be that Council will receive the report FIN.24.04 for information. Would somebody like to move that to get it on the floor? Moved by Deputy Mayor Nielsen, seconded by Councillor Dubik. Any comments, questions, or concerns? It's indicating that uh, we're looking at a, uh, a deficit of approximately $100,000. Seeing no Questions, comments, or concerns? All those in favor of receiving the court for information? 
It's carried. Thank you. Uh, the second item under finance and 12.2 is the award of RFP F18-2024-02, the Asset Management Plan Consulting Services. And the motion would be that council receives FIN.24.03, award of RFP F18-2024-02, Asset Management Plan Consulting Services for information, and that council authorize the award in accordance with the RFP Evaluation Committee's recommendation to Hempson Consultants in the amount of $34,650. Somebody like to move that to put it on the floor? Moved by Councillor Dubik, seconded by Councillor Lowhead. Again, any questions, comments, or concerns? Councillor Dubik. Uh, thank you, Chair. So a question to our Director of Finance. Um, so we see a range from the selected consultant um, to another um, bidder with regards to the number of hours. And I'm just trying to find that again. Yes, yeah, so the uh, the successful or the recommendation here uh, was to go with the consultant providing 190 consultant hours while there was another one um, suggesting up to 333 consultant hours. Um, so question to you is, are you confident that you can um, get what you need uh, to meet requirements uh, based on the 190 consultant hours? Uh, Dr. McCarthy? Thank you, through you, Chair Allwood. Uh, yes, I am confident. Um, what we're looking for with this update is mainly to meet um, the requirements of the OREG. Um, by June of next year, and also to update our financial plan. And I'm confident that with uh, the proposed uh, um, work plan that we will be able to meet those requirements. Any follow-up, uh, Councilor Duke? No? Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion that's on the floor? That's uh, carried unanimously. Thank you. I'll turn the chair back to Member Queen. Hey, thank you, uh, Councillor Allwood. Uh, item 13, Fire, Police and Safety. There's no chair or no reports to uh, report on. Councillor Lowhead, so we'll move on to 14, Transportation and Public Spaces. I'll pass the chair over to Councillor Wickens. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. Um, so item 14.1 on your agenda. Uh, it's a bylaw, uh, 2024-03 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of the boundary road agreement between the municipality of West Gray and the municipality of Gray Highlands. Can I get somebody to make a motion to put this on the board? Councillor Allwood, seconded by Mayor McQueen. So uh, council approved bylaw 2024-033 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of the boundary road agreement between the municipality of West Gray and the municipality of Gray Highlands. And uh, if you go on the, the report there, there's a little picture of a map there that shows you who's, who's responsible for what part of where and uh, all the details are in there. And uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, really. I, um, any questions or concerns that anybody has? It just mainly says who looks after what. So, so all those in favor? That is carried unanimously. And I will pass the chair back to Mayor McQueen. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Wickens. So we're on to the... Uh, Consent agenda. Are there any of those items wish to be pulled for separate discussion? Sir Duby. Uh, so could we pull 15.3, please? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are there any other ones for we still have conversation, but are there a need for separate? Okay. Seeing none, then can I have a mover and a seconder for the remaining consent? Uh, Councillor Allwood, second by Deputy Mayor. Discussion. Okay, so when I was reading in the source water protection minutes, people could go to that. I found it interesting. I don't know if people had a chance to read through it. 
but I found an interesting comment, um, which if you go to those minutes and you scroll down through those minutes, you get into the part where it says, uh, Kimberly Amick Talisman Karst Study Report 7B. And it talks about a report there, but it does talk about uh, a further direction uh, that it needs to have a more detailed hydrogeological car study in the area of the Kimberly Amick Talisman. So, you know, the source water protection, it's been around for quite a long time, and obviously source water protection is around any wellheads that are in a... Um, zone of um you know influence i guess you used to call it but if you dive down into the first paragraph it sort of talks about um the kimberly amic talisman drinking water system which revealed the detection of pesticides in the location of the sinkhole but no reasonable measures detected of pes er, pesticides at the talisman spring location which is good so anyway i guess that's what spurred on the further study to do further further but it was just I was just reading through here this morning. I go, hmm. okay. So that's I said I thought it might have been something else I might have detected. But anyway, anyway, I just I just made a note of 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 that being in there, and I thought, you know, that is one of our water systems. So it's you know obviously I'm sure, and I'm sure I'm sure uh, our director of environmental services is aware of those comments and is following up on that. So anyway, just. It sort of perked my ears when I read that this morning. <clears throat> Any other comments? I see in the Eugenia District Community Association, it talks about their... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Councillor Dubey. Yeah, thank you for that, Mr. Mayor, for bringing that up. Um, so as I also said on the Gray Sawville Conservation Authority, this has been brought up, so um, okay. it has been noted. So there will be... So this... Um, uh, there, there will be continued sort of monitoring um, of this. Um, it will probably still take a few more years yeah. to come to complete. Um, but yes, but it, it it it's on my radar, and um, you know, and it's important that you know we do continue to keep an eye um, on our uh, on our water source uh, areas. Thank I'm you. A little surprised on the sense of of the pesticide use, which is from agricultural purposes, and and it's generally up in that area. It's pretty low, low far like low agricultural use, I guess. But uh, anyway. We don't own that land. The municipality did own that land. We do not own that land anymore, but it is something that uh, is of note. And, and, and I appreciate your comments that the Conservation Authority is aware of that as well. So, pretty much so. Um, other comments? I, I was going to dive into the soggy mobility and regional transit budget. Um, but they seem to be over or like in the red. <laughs> I don't know if there's any comments to Councillor Lowhead on that. It just it seems to be there's a revenue of 1.144 and an expense of 1.804. So I um I think there's a deficit of the 660,000 there. And I, I just don't know if there's any comments there to you, Joel, or just uh, I know Mr. Councillor Allen, you sat on that at one time as well. So Sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I believe that the number represents there's um, a transition right now and looking to purchase um, a whole lot of new vehicles. Um, yes. And um, I believe that that's contingent upon uh, future funding. Um, I'd have to double check with uh, Steph and make sure that that's where the that discrepancy is coming from. Um, but the the big news right now at uh, Saga Mobility is sort of a transition from their of their fleet from um, older, outdated vehicles to uh, newer, more modern vehicles. And so there's going to be a large uh, purchase that takes place. Um, and there will be um, funding, for, I think, both federal and provincial funding upcoming. So I believe that that's the difference there. Okay, thank you for that. Sorry, Councillor Allen, sorry. I think the short time I was on the that well, I wasn't really on the board. I was on as a non-voting member. But anyways, I believe that um, the deficit is what it gets funded by the gas tax. Oh. So these are all up top. The income is from users and municipal funding and all the expenses. And then whatever's at the bottom, that's what they use the gas tax, I believe. Okay, thank you for that, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. Maybe a question for Councillor Lowhead. Uh, so the Great Highlands portion 
is listed as 23, 4, 32, 39. And no fees to like the municipalities are based upon ridership. Um, so has there been uh, kind of a flat ridership in Grey Highlands? Has there been an increase in ridership in Grey Highlands uh, utilizing the smart transit? I know we've helped support some additional marketing and media for uh, advertising of this uh, Those cards. usage. Council, if you have any information, or maybe you have to get back. Yeah, that, uh, thank you, Ms. Mayor, and and uh, good question, to Deputy Mayor. I'd actually have to get back, and I have to go back and, and look. Um, it's when I we had this discussion at the last meeting, and it wasn't like a market uh, difference um, for Great Highlands, in my recollection. I think it's been a pretty a pretty steady ridership um, for our municipality. Um, we are, as you can see, one of the min minority users. I think maybe the the smallest uh, next to Chatsworth, uh, almost equal to Chatsworth. Um, so we make up a, a fairly small ridership um, usership of uh, of this program, but um, you know, still obviously well used within our municipality and important uh, for those who use it. Follow up, Deputy Mayor. Okay. Any other comments on any other correspondence? <clears throat> Seeing that all in favor? That is carried. Okay, I'll go back to you, Councilor Dubik, with regards to the uh, Senior of the Year. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's maybe an opportunity for us to, again, take advantage, you know, of um, submitting a nomination for Senior of the Year. Um, we we did participate last year. Yep. Um, and so um, just maybe that's a question to staff. Or to cancel, um, you know, if this is something, I'm not sure if we already have something in play, um, you know, to to support this process. Um, I'm clerk. <clears throat> Thank you, through you, Mayor McQueen. Um, we have a item on our closed session agenda about this to later on today. <laughs> Thank you for the expediency of that. <laughs> Obviously, if you, if you if there's nominations come forward, you want to keep them quiet. <laughs> But uh, thanks for bringing that forward. And uh, so, um, because it's on the agenda, should we? It should be a separate motion, though, that we will possibly choose somebody. Because right now, it's just well. Right now, it just says uh, your correspondence for information. But do we? Okay, but should it still not say that there will be, a, you know, a follow up to this from council, other than just receiving? It? Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Thank you, through your Mayor McQueen, um, because it's already on the agenda as an item that we're going to be discussing later. And then there will be a resolution that comes out of closed yeah. session. Um, there's no requirement for anything further, but to receive it for information at this time. Had it was on our, our previous council agenda and might, somebody might say, we should do this, then it would, would have been action taken at that time. Gotcha. Okay. So, um, uh, Councilor Dubik, I, need, I do need a motion to, as, as, as written. Uh, so, yes. So, so as written to, uh, to uh, accept it, you know, for information. Okay, do you have a second for Councillor Alwood? Any discussion on that? Seeing that, all in favor? That is carried. Okay. <clears throat> uh, a, are there new notice of motions? Deputy Mayor. So, um, Mayor McQueen, I would like to propose a uh, motion uh, to go onto our agenda right now. Um, I have a, a time sensitive motion um, regarding a request. Um, back from February, I believe, from Rotary asking for a council member to be um, put on to um, the community park committee that they were creating with Rotary, Markdale Recreation, and a few other user groups. They have met once. I went to the, the meeting um, just as a, a general to go and get more information to bring back to council. But as they move forward, given that the lands that they are talking about and making plans for are municipal lands, I think it's important to have a council member as part of that committee so that there's at least a mechanism to re report back. When the delegation happened, the motion came from this body to um, refer to the staff report to come forward. Um, Director Harris has been working on a number of reports since then that have been coming in through. And so a report to come back forward specifically on their delegation requests um, hasn't come yet, but in the meantime, we, I think it's appropriate to try to get somebody posted to this committee. Um, and so I'd like to have that, uh, when talking to the clerk this morning, I would need, um, 
two thirds majority to approve so adding this endorsement motion. Direct, motion. Direct, a direct motion. motion. Yes. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. It's okay. I was going to let you talk for a while, maybe to come up. But I think sometimes we can just like keep digging. Yeah. Okay. So you're moving a motion to have a direct motion first, and then we'll have the debate on the direct motion. Is that correct, Madam Clerk? Um, actually, Mayor McQueen, a direct motion means that the motion, he's it's presenting direct. the motion and council can either Except approve it. it with two thirds vote or deny it. Okay. There's no, I'm going to do a direct motion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so do you want to be clearer than you want yeah. to? Okay. Direct Sorry. It took me a second to find my notice of motion. I was trying to figure out where it was in my email. So, um, thank you. So whereas Mark Dill Rotary presented to council on February 21st, 2024, and whereas they have plans and a, and a goal of creating a community uh, Rotary Park Committee to oversee the operations and development of Rotor of the Rotary Park located in Markdale. And whereas this park is located on municipal lands and therefore of interest to the municipality, now therefore be it, uh, now therefore council appoint, insert name here, to the Rotary Park Committee. And so I don't have a name to add to my motion right away. I'm looking for just conversation around the table to see who would be interested. Right, There's a hand up here, so I'm going to go to the clerk and then go ahead. And that council directs staff to bring back a bylaw appointing such member. That is wonderful yeah. additional wording. But my point is, and it's, it's if I get a seconder for here, is uh, putting the motion on the floor, then we need to go out and say who's all interested in maybe being that representative. So procedurally, Madam Clerk, if, if, if I get a second to, their, to this motion, that's putting it out there. We have to have two thirds. But to, if it passes, then we're going to have to go back and see who's interested to being that individual. So I can do it all in one, because if it doesn't pass, it's remote, remote to say who's going to be on it, right? Um, through you, Mayor McQueen, we can't put a motion on the floor with a blank in it. So well, the blank it, needs to be filled in. Or it could be a council member. And then it's if it passes, then we can come back and, and then a secondary motion that will point. That, that or an amendment. Okay. So then I guess the motion would be, and now therefore council appoint a council member to the Rotary Park Committee. And then we can, once it's, if it makes it to the floor, then we can amend that motion okay. to add the name. Do we have a seconder for that direct motion? Mr. Ruggins. Okay. Well, the motion is on the floor. I guess I'm in, is, is there, who's interested in being on here? That's one process or, or you nominate somebody to be on there. That's two processes. But in the past, sometimes if it becomes more than one nomination or there's more than one interest, because we, we've had it open it up other interest and then you sort of have that conversation. So, What's your wishes, Council? Go ahead, Councillor Wickens. I have. A, <clears throat> I guess could I ask a, a question of an an individual if they're interested, and then I could nominate them. Was Most that the all right? Sure. Deputy Mayor Nielsen, would you be interested? I went to the first meeting, and I have no problem with right, continuing. All right, then I would nominate Deputy Mayor Nielsen for the position. Okay. So, an amendment to the main motion. Do you have a seconder for that amendment, Councillor Owen? Discussion on that. Sometimes you go, is there any other amendments? But you can't really do that only one at a time. I don't see any. Well, well, this is the amendment to the main motion. So you can't have two amendments to the main motion to, to a motion. So that would be, I guess, there's, is there other are there others that are interested in being on there? I guess that to be fair. Seeing none. Okay. Are the amendment motions on the floor. It's moved and second to appoint to nominate. Uh, Councillor Deputy Mayor Nielsen, all in favor of that amendment to that motion? That is carried. Our main motion, that is uh, our, our main direct motion that has been amended to include, you be quiet. Councillor Nielsen, any further discussion on that motion? We can talk later. Seeing that, all in favor? That is carried. You can talk later. You can get that. Sure. The, the, any further uh, notice of motions, uh, Deputy Mayor? Deputy Mayor. Oh, sorry. Um, I know you just got yes, uh, there for a minute. Uh, so another notice motion I'll bring forward to the next council meeting will be uh, whether or not Greyhounds considers uh, creating a finance committee. Yep, okay. Similar to the county. Okay. Uh, are there any other notice of motions? Are there any other notice of motions? Go ahead. Are there any questions? Yeah, any question, <laughs> please. Um, I, I'm sorry, I thought the clerk also... Um, stated to um to nominate an alternate or, or was i hearing things to to the park committee no no maybe i was hearing things okay then i'm all good are there okay 
<laughs> no, that, that's 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 there's nothing wrong with that because sometimes we sometimes we have alternates for committees, right? And uh, I would say if the deputy mayor feels that's important, the, the, like you never know when you can't make a meeting. I always maintain that having an alternate or having two people because if one person misses something, it still gets the, the, the message forward. But okay, food for thought. Okay, so um, any other notice of motions? Okay. Uh, item 17, County Council Report. Uh, we had a meeting last week. Deputy Mayor, do you wish to go ahead first? Sure. Um, so last uh, week we did have a County Council meeting. There were a few interesting conversations. Um, first, we did have a um, award for uh, awarded to a Great County Paramedic, Teresa Thibault. Uh, she was recognized for with the Medal Medical Director's Award of Excellence in our paramedic services. So that was very exciting. Um, Kevin McNabb uh, was there to help comment and, and speak to the character of Teresa and the job that she's been doing for our paramedic services. Um, we did have a conversation around our Gray County strategic plan. Um, the county strategic plan um, has been approved. There, It did spur some discussions about um, items that some council members thought should have been in there or a discussion about the uh, process for the strategic plan. Um, it was interesting to see because some, um, one councilor, county councilor member did bring up the concept of whether or not we needed to have a consultant come in to produce the document. Um, and another commented that they were unclear as to how the consultant had got from discussions that were had um, during a strategic planning session with the county councilors and staff to seeing the final report and not seeing kind of an in-between stage as as items and, and conversations were being kind of worked into the plan. Um, similar to, um, I think the the concepts coming from our Great Highland Strategic Plan was the four pillar concept and a lot of the strategic plan building off of reports and um, recommendations and such moving forward when councils are working on um, strategy plans moving forward, it helps having that data and that, that reference. And um, one of the county councillors kind of was lost as to why that was the case and that we weren't trying to stake new ground or move forward. Um, for Great Highlands sake, having reports like our building services and our bridge reports and things like that help to build our strategy as to where we need to go to move forward and what we need to work on and capital projects and such. And I think the same thing was kind of done with the county strategic plan and building upon the information and the data and, and knowledge that we have. So I was kind of surprised by some of that conversation. There was also a, a conversation brought up about um, municipal services and restructuring and such, which was kind of... Um, uh, I was surprised to see that kind of conversation coming up that it should be added to the strategic plan. Um, but it meant it meant for an interesting debate. Um, the county council was actually rather short um, because uh, a lot of members of county council were headed off to Town of the Mountains Council Chambers to partake in the Great Lakes. Regional uh, meeting. Yeah, regional meeting. It was like a kind of a meet and greet and, and information, not a conference, but kind of a gathering of member municipalities from the Great Lakes region. So. I think Alex Ruff was there that day and did some presentation and it was recorded in the agenda then. There you go. That's all I have to report. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna follow up. Um, James Cognac, uh, he presented a, a, a slight presentation with regards to Bruce Power, um, you know, just in the sense of the overall what's happening there with regards to the impact that they have in our, in our com community. I uh, talked about the uh, expansion of the isotopes for for uh, nuclear medicine for regards to uh, cancer treatments. Talked about the question was asked. So basically, um, nuclear power is your base load power, and there was a question asked with regards to the uh, proposed uh, pump storage at Meaford and how that would come into the into the play. And he said, so basically, nuclear is your base load support. But you have you have peaks in your where right now you might have natural gas that will help provide that quick peak power when when on demand. And he did talk about where um, there is a shift, and we talked about renewables and we talked about battery storage. But he did say, but with the 
the uh, proposal in Reefer, it would be one of those things that could handle the peak power. So it would store the water, create power when it was on demand. And and so so he he talked about that as as a complement to versus competing against, because that was sort of where the question was coming from, was that obviously with we, you know, and I know Councilor Allen or Councilor Elwood that you're, you know, part of the to community that looks at and talks about battery storage and you know, all the dynamics around that. But he did say that that is also that, I guess you're working toward that peak demand of having that battery storage. So that's a, that's a rationale sort of behind it, right? And uh, I did thank him for what he does in the community because they do offer a lot of grants and a lot of funding. Like, I mean, just as an example for the rodeo, and Michelle can relate to this, that they, they donate $5,000. I presume they did it, are doing it again this year. Yeah, so... You know that's a little bit of giving back, and and um, you know, and if there are other community activities, they are an opportunity to get funding. You know, you you, you would do that presentation. So, um, but yeah, anytime anybody wants to have a chat with him, he's very open, and it so that so the you know the they're going through that uh, redevelopment of uh, of that. Um, I'm not sure we I think we talked. I, I mentioned the part about the smaller nuclear for the north and you know it's going to be a transition and he talked about electrification and how it's going to be a transition and stuff i'm just trying to think if i missed anything else from this conversation he's always a great guy to talk to you know he's a great spokesperson really a good spokesperson for bruce power and we know the oh yeah the reinvestment of that is going to show that there's you know the, the the investment in our well Bruce and Gray County is also the trades and all that and reinvestment of uh, you know the continuation of, of Bruce Power being in our area is you know a, a surgeons of of economic development that that spreads out from all the parts that they they do Deputy Mayor, um just maybe one extra thing I'll add to the conversation from James was that um they're currently still working on the refurbishment program um but there is. They've already started to look at the planning and start getting site approvals for an expansion once the refurbishment is done mm -hmm. so they can scale up um, Bruce Nuclear to be ready for the future needs of Ontario's energy demand was the way he kind of worded it. And it was interesting to hear that in, in conjunction with the conversation about the need for um, uh, some kind of a storage system to help offset when when demand and, and the amount of energy that can be produced. So they they are ju not just looking at the refurbishment of what exists now they're looking at how do we expand output and stuff and as part of that expansion is also kind of leads into the isotope conversation that's been going on and around the region um expansion of the uh, reactors or refurbishment of the reactors means there'll be ha more opportunities to produce isotopes uh, for medical needs thank you for that and it, it shows that uh the uh, those well those facilities of bruce um Pickering, what's the other one? Yeah, I have been a big source of power for Ontario, which is, you know, green power, really, in a sense. They're not, uh, you know, in that sense, well, more or less, they're, 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 well, however, whatever, they're, they're, but they're not coal or carbon based. Like that. And I think that's the part that he was trying to convey as well. Any questions from council with regards to our county council? I will let you know ASAP. Tom, about the eleventh. I just we're just a little bit up in the air. What's happening there yet? But I'll let you know as soon as I know. Okay. Um, so if if there's no other questions, I need a, I need a motion then to receive the highlights from County Council, Deputy Councilor Allwood, Deputy Mayor. All in favor? That is carried. All right, Council Privileges. What do you like to talk about? It's been happening. It's been exciting. Pretty quiet, eh? Go ahead, Council. Go ahead. <laughs> you first. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So first off, I'd like to say this um, last weekend, there was a wonderful Easter egg hunt at uh, the grist mill north of Kimberly Hall. Well, Kimberly Hall is closed for, um, you know, uh, pending repairs, which I hear are upcoming uh, shortly, which is great. But the, I think there was something like 40 children that attended the um, Easter egg hunt, which is just incredible to see them all running around uh, all over the, the grounds um, and a really wonderful story told by, by um uh, Ingrid uh, Remkins, who was one of the turtle champions here in Great Highlands as well. That was that was really nice to see. Huge community event. Um, and upcoming um, at uh, Tiffin Center, Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Area, um, there's the Spring Tonic uh, Annual Maple Syrup Festival. So that's um, this coming weekend, the, the 6th and 7th. So really strongly recommend people, if they haven't uh, got their fill of maple syrup yet, 
um, go check out that event because it's always a really wonderful time at a really wonderful location, the, the Tiffin Center, um, just over there uh, towards sort of Innisfil. Okay, well, thank you for that, Joel. Any questions to Joel? Deputy Mayor? Um, so just uh, for council privilege, just comment on uh, the Eglis Fail event that took place at the Hanley Institute. It was really well attended. They were standing room only. Um, we had, we were uh, in attendance, sorry, was uh, Alex Ruff and Rick Byers and the mayor of West Gray and Southgate and Warden Brian Milne, um, as well as our Mayor McQueen. Um, it was fantastic to have the community out. There was um, a children's play that was produced that was uh, informative and factual of some of the things that Agnes was uh, dealing with and, and fighting for uh, back in the day. So it's always nice to have the community gather around and, and support Remember the Lady of Grey. Um, another thing I'd like to just point out, um, I had the privilege of hitting to the uh, Grey Highlands Museum on Monday. Um, our uh, museum coordinator, Peter Whitehead, had done an Easter egg hunt within the museum itself. Um, when my family and I showed up, uh, there had already been 20 or 30 children go through. And then while I was there, another 10, I think 10 kids more came through after my children. Uh, it was quite a blast. He had um, Easter eggs hidden around. And if you had found all the eggs and you were rewarded with a chocolate from him. And then some of the children were adding to the egg collection because so the egg chocolate you got was inside the Easter eggs and they applied their eggs. So he had a hard time remembering how many eggs there were in total as every kid had kind of started hiding their own eggs around the system. So it was pretty fun. Um, and it was nice, nice to see. It was, for one, a wonderful uh, weather this weekend for Easter. Um, and it was just nice to see a fun event at our Greyhounds Museum. Fantastic stuff. And I think that was in the uh, Adam Seals operational uh, report as well. So we had it in there for sure. Okay. Any other? Council Go ahead, Councillor Wickens. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. Um, the Ontario, no, not the Ontario, the Osprey Rural Amateur Theatre is uh, tentatively scheduling a performance on Friday, June 14th. And uh, as far as details to what the title of the production is, or I'm, I'm not sure. I've been sequestered as an actor again. <clears throat> I don't know. There'll be a lot of... Uh, a lot of talk about pay for this one because of the it's resounding one. success of the last one. I think the actors may or well, they may go on strike if they don't get their demands met. But uh, and also the uh, Rockland, maybe maybe Nadia would like to. Maybe I'm stealing your thunder. Uh, Rockland uh, community players are having a play uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday evenings, and Sunday afternoon this weekend. So. Get your tickets fast. Uh, they're twenty dollars a person. I believe they are twenty. Yeah, I have some in my pocket. If things are sold out, I maybe I could be bought. Do I hear 25, 25, 25? Thank you for that. So, uh, just back to you, Council Working. So, I heard that this year they're going to get double what they got last year for salary. The actors? Well, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> nothing times nothing is nothing. <laughs> All right, Councillor Duby. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. So yes, thank you, Councillor Wickens. Yes, so um, so folks, if you want to get your tickets, get them quick. Um, they are getting snatched up. For the big five O is the play in in Rockland. Um, so again, they're um, the uh, the uh, the you know they're on April fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So and you can get your tickets at Markdale Flowers personally yours in Meaford or calling Stacy Campbell. Um, one other item I'd like to just to bring to people's attention um, is the Earth Film Festival. So the Earth, the Earth Film Festival is an annual event that's, that's been happening for many years, uh, really successful. It's organized by the Grace Sobel Conservation Foundation. Um, it is on May 16th at 7 p.m. at the Roxy Theater in Owen Sound. Uh, there's going to be two films that are featured: The Water Walker and Becoming Tom Thompson. Um, we they were they are also organizing an online auction from May fourth, uh, sorry uh, May 9th to the twenty third. 
Um, so do you get your tickets. Uh, they are thirty dollars per person. Um, I was there last year. It was it was a great event, and this year will be outstanding again. Outstanding in your field. Sorry, you'll be outstanding in your field. <laughs> yeah, you're outstanding, right? So, well, thank you for that, Councillor uh, Dubik. Anything else? Okay. Um, the Saturday is Tartan Day, but more importantly, it's the o -O Ontario Association of Ag Societies District 10 Spring Meeting at the Markdale Ag at 9.30. I'm supposed to bring greetings. That uh, usually happens a couple of times a year. But there's something happening on the 8th of April. Yes. So a lot of hype down in Niagara Falls where it's going to be right completely off in Kingston, I think, as well. And does everybody have a pair of glasses? Because if you don't, you can use a welding helmet or something that's it's really dark. Somebody don't look at it. Uh, I think where we are, we'll see a portion. Like there's still be a portion of the sun. Go ahead, Councillor Wickens. From what I read, we get 97% total uh, coverage here where we are. So I think I think like for places like Niagara Falls and Kingston or that band is it's like it'll be like 103 or 107 years before the next like in that area right I mean they happen all I guess I understand they happen all over the place different bands across the um, the world and and that sort of thing but uh, I do remember seeing I remember Dan do you remember in high school there was one we were kept inside the school like at Great Highlands and I remember we watched it on the screen and there was an eclipse do you remember that. Our class was very smart, and we were smart enough not to look at the sun. We were looking at the TV inside. The, the, they kept yeah. us inside. I just remember us keeping I think I seen it or heard it on the radio this morning. The last total eclipse, total eclipse here was in the 1920s. I just forget the exact date, but it's yeah. been a long time. Be partial eclipse. And then yeah. there's, there's, there's a. Yeah, we've had lots of partials. Yeah. Right. Anyway. As they say, be careful because, uh, you know, it can damage your eyes. And I remember, I think at 17, there was a partial one. And I remember looking up with the welding helmet. And you can see it through the welding helmet glass because it's got to be really dark. So you can see that. And there's something you can put a hole in the box and you can see the shadow or something. I don't know how you do that, right? But uh, anyway, that is, uh, um, I'm not sure if people are driving. And, but they say that if it's a, like, it gets the complete eclipse that like the chickens will roost and the birds will, and like at the, it's like dark for like three and a half minutes. So it's, it's going to be quite an interesting. Now, if it's cloudy, that's that's the risk we run in here. And now I think they're talking about nicer weather next week. So it may be, it may be all right. So anyway, just uh, yeah, a note. That'll be the chat next week. Uh, since there's no other council of privileges, uh, I guess we will recess till three o'clock. Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Um, through you, Mayor McQueen, uh, we're actually going to go into closed session now. We only have one item that we are waiting until three o'clock. Okay. The other items can proceed. So I emailed you the motion, if you would like, or I can read it out. I want to if you email it, I'll get it. But you can go ahead and read it, out and then I'll just look for a move in a second. Um, that council proceed into closed session at, we'll say two fifteen. <laughs> PM to discuss matters related to the following 2024 senior of the year, personal matters, but identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, the CAO Karen Govan and acting clerk Amanda Fines Van Alstein remain in attendance. Uh, staffing update, personal matters, but an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, that CAO Karen Govan and HR manager Teresa Crawford remain in attendance. And at three o'clock PM at CAO review, uh, again, personal matters, but an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, and that Gray County Clerk Tara Warder be in attendance. Okay, thank you for that, Madam Clerk. Do we have a mover and a seconder for that motion, please? Councillor Allwood, Councillor Dubik. Any discussion on that motion? So I guess from the viewing public, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Just a, a question for clarity and forgive me just for understanding going into closed session. Um, are we going to, are we talking about the staffing update while um, the county clerk is here? Or is that going to be done? No, that's when it's going. Okay. And when I was just confused, I thought we were going to do that at 3 p.m. So we're going to do the, uh, the CAO re, uh, review is, is at three. Yeah. Uh, this part, I think, as I understand, uh, Madam Clerk, you're going to, uh, when we get into the talking about the personal matters that you will 
point CAO okay. to take over that. Sorry. Similar to the last time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got the memo. Sorry. It's okay. I didn't get the memo. <laughs> so I guess from a from a public's uh, you know, we're getting uh, getting giddy here now. But uh, from a from a public perspective, we'll go in now and if there and then we I think we talked about coming back to that other item at uh, after four o'clock with regards to the one that we deferred, the motion that we deferred, right? And part of that deferral, deferring was to be coming out. Now, if we get some time and we have time before we get to three o'clock, we could probably come out and deal with that if we have time. If we have time. If not, we'll, but we did tell the public we were going to do that at four o'clock. So maybe we better stick to four o'clock. So disregard that altogether. I was just trying to speed things up here, but then I'll get in trouble. All right. So that's been moved in a second. Uh, all in favor of that motion? That's carried. So from the viewing public, we'll probably be till four o'clock or thereabouts. So okay. Cool. And we're gonna we're gonna do that like I didn't say what time, but let's say that's two two fifteen. Okay. Take a quick break and we'll come back.
एक मिनट सर
what we're saying. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so I'm going to redo the vote. So, um, Councillor Lohead, do you... Mayor McQueen. Sorry. Sorry, my apologies. Um, nobody was able to hear any part of what we just discussed, so we should probably rehash the main motion and amendment again. Oh, but they heard, they heard. Sorry, that they, was my fault. They heard us coming out of open session and did they, okay, that part. Okay. So Madam Clerk, can you re reiterate the referred motion that was deferred, referred, whatever, like early, early today. We're talking silly now. Um, yes, through you, Mayor McQueen, uh, the main motion is that council direct staff to begin the process of amending the zoning bylaw and the official plan to remove any prohibitions to mobile or modular homes. And then there was amendment made that the main motion be amended to remove the words amending and add the words proposing to amend. Okay. So right now we're going to vote on the uh, amending uh, motion to the main motion. Any further comments, questions? If not, those in favor of the amended motion. The amendment. The amendment. The amendment. Sorry, the amendment. Okay. Opposed? Which way do you vote? He voted for it. Okay. Okay. So the main motion is now amended. Uh, any discussion now on the main motion as amended? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. All right. Uh, uh, the German, uh, sorry, then the confirming bylaw that a bylaw 2023 uh, 035 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council on March 26, 2024, and April 3rd, 2024, be read first and second and third time and finally passed. And the mayor and the clerk be authorized to sign and seal the same, notwithstanding any contrary provisions of council. Can I have a mover for that, Deputy Mayor? Councillor Councillor Dubik. Any discussion on that? Seeing none. All in favor? That is carried. Joel. Uh, upcoming meetings are are listed there today. For upcoming is uh one more motion, please. No, it's a pretty mayor, second by Councillor Allwood. That the council adjourn until the next regular scheduled meeting or until they call the chair. All in favor? That is carried. And I'm gonna call it at 601.